It, Jacqueline, Insomni, well, Jacqueline mostly this time. Insomni's behaving. Jacqueline, you, you guys need to, you need to decide if you're going to be mad at me for being late or if you want me to be late so you can indulge in selfish desires, okay? Like, this, this is something we need, we need to smooth over, okay? You can't have it both ways. Maybe the prime sub voxel rot. Not that there is such a thing as me being late, because the schedule doesn't exist. It's completely up at my discretion. Did you see the thing Advi said? I generally, I generally try to avoid anything you guys say. <coughs> I had my laptop closed and all I heard was quiet coughing. There's gonna be a lot of that this stream. I don't know. It's just that time of the year for me, man. I, I just like, I don't know, I got a ticklish throat. And it sucks when I'm doing like dialogue heavy games. <laughs> it's bad. Was it the one where you said you were going on an E date? Cough drop time? Yeah, I got him on deck. I got him on deck. I, I will be, I will be nicer to you depending on the type of E date you went on. Like if it was just y'all playing like Minecraft and having a fun little time. Yeah. Look at global. Oh god, I always gotta do all the fucking work. You can't just quote it. Was it said recently? Cause I ain't scrolling for this shit. Looks down, puts hair behind ear, nervous lip bites. I don't know. That's pretty tame. I don't know. Like that's not even like the worst thing a mod said in the last week. Serial killer dating sim. You know it. I don't want to say the thing. You just put it in quotes and suddenly you're not saying it. You just have to add dash Abby at the end. Hey, Nodi Gang just came in. How's everyone doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Is this the Dead by Daylight dating sim? Yes, yes. I have a funny story about this one. I, I have a funny story about this. Like, hey, <laughs> thank you for the sub, Nugget Angel. I got an email from the devs of this game. Real serial killers? No. I, I, I don't know if any real serial killer dating sims exist. I got an email from the devs of this game, and they said, Hey, Quite, we're a big fan of your monster fucker dating sim videos. We would like to give you this copy of our game for personal use. I, I, I'm not getting paid to make this video. It, this was just something I planned on doing anyways, and I'm like, well, I guess I got a free key now. They just gave it to me. They, they saw the monster fucker dating people, and it was like, this guy's perfect for this. Personal use? Yeah. Like, it's a code that comes, like, essentially with no obligation to use it for anything. I'm just choosing to use it for a video, because I was going to make a video on this anyways. You know? I only just saw the title. Yeah, I mean, it makes your eyebrows raise, don't it? That's a banger title right there. Also, what'd you guys think of the trolley, the trolley, uh, problem video? LMAO, no way can you ever go into politics? I don't know, man. Have you seen the people currently in politics? I feel like they have a fair amount of baggage. The difference is I just don't, like, hide mine as well. Like the trolley video was very nice. Hell yeah. It was terrible on God. I'm glad you think so. Well edited. Yeah, for sure. Flinders has been killing it recently. So, the, I, I had some friends who had played this game. And my problem is... I've never played Dead by Daylight before. Like, the dating sim is more up my alley than the actual game is. And apparently you need to know things about these characters' lore in order to uh, do certain parts, so I may need- I may request chat help me out at certain points. You have a slushy? That's really cool. Very glad- very happy to hear that. Dead by Daylight is amazing. I don't know, man. I mean, the asymmetric gameplay is really interesting. But if they don't add spring trap, like there's not really a point for me. And apparently Scott Cawthon's not playing ball. Oh no, it's DBD themed. It's DBD licensed. It's an official like Dead by Daylight property. When you date the killing monsters, DBD's not that fun. Do not listen to chat. I can imagine it'd be fun with friends. Like if you and three other people fight some random who is the killer. One that looks really cool, like one Dead by Daylight type game that I'm interested in is, um, I think it's Dragon Ball, uh, it's like the Dragon Ball one where the killer is Cell. Dragon Ball Breakers? Yeah, Dragon Ball Breakers is the one. 
That one looks cool. And I'll probably give that a shot, just on my free time. <coughs> when the Game Theory entire FNAF lore watch party? Um, I'll get back to you on that. Memento Mori, Christ. Dragon Ball Ball Breakers? It, it is funny how the initials for, or the acronym for Dead by Daylight and Dragon Ball Breakers is very similar. Like, it's one letter off. And it uses all the same letters. Like, instead of there being a second D, which is way more fun than a second B, there's a second B. WTF, I'm back. Welcome back, Jacqueline. Opinion on gay people? Decent. I think they're pretty cool. Thanks for the stuff, the subs, everybody who's letting them roll in. Appreciate it. I finally played Before Your Eyes I Cried. It's a really good game. It's been a long time since I played it, but I still remember it. Like, it, it still made me tear up a little bit on Ivan's dream. One of single-digit occasions where that's happened. I feel bad for all the people whose first stream this is. People say this every stream. Every stream is like this. Every stream being your first stream will probably leave you with some type of issues when you leave. There, there are no quite streams you can come into and not, like, feel bad for the person who is just getting initiated. Like... The serial, killer, the serial killer dating sim is arguably more tame than some of the other dating sims we've looked at. I would say this is an easier sell than, the, than Dial Town was to a newcomer. Because this is about a familiar property that they know about. My first stream was the pro trolley problem. I got hooked immediately. Hell yeah. Alright, here, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to open the game and then I'm going to play it. Crazy. I haven't done... Uh, th this is how I do with, with most of these games. I'm going in blind. I, I only know some things my friends have told me about this. I'm not super sure how this is going to go down, but we'll see. We'll see. The studio is literally called PsyOp. That's so fucking hard. These, thank you for the sub, Lesgen. Apparently these guys made a different dating sim. I th did they do the KFC one? I'm trying to remember. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, epilepsy warning, fellas. Please read the following tur- uh, no. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Wow, he looks incredibly big and strong. I wonder what his in-game design looks like in the original Dead by Daylight game. I'm sure it's incredibly similar to this. I think I need to crank this a bit. Maybe the sub neeks, appreciate it. Okay, it's reading time. Yeah, shout out the devs for the copy. I will abuse it well. There's a KFC one. Yeah, it was like just part of KFC's weird marketing push to like do all the weird shit they could think of. It is actually, I thought so. I knew I knew they had done some other gimmick dating sim. I don't know how much of a gimmick this one is. This could, cause this one like cost money. The KFC one was free. The art's really good, like unironically. Welcome to your dream vacation. Before we get started, what shall we call you? Oh wait, I gotta fix my VTuber. Put it over here. Actually, let me let me wait to see what the text box are like. Quite obviously, that's me. Duh. This looks like a nice little tropical getaway. I see myself enjoying this. I didn't know this was a game. Well, you know now. Welcome. I don't know. The shit about DBD. This is gonna be a learning experience. Quite. Cough, cough, cough. Dude, that's just like what I'm doing right now. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's why that was not on purpose. That was not on purpose. You wake up. Thank you for the sub, human potato. And thank you for the prime sub, fellas. Appreciate ya. You wake up on the beach, soaking wet. Salt water stinging the inside of your throat as if you'd nearly drown. Water falls from your mouth as you open it to gasp for air. Thanks for the 200-bit Saturn. You have no memory of how you got here. In fact, you can only remember your own name, but not where you came from or a single fact about your life. What do you do know is that, despite the outrageous beauty of the landscape around you, you feel incredibly sick to your stomach. Cough, cough. I cough again. Wow, really went the wrong down the wrong pipe, huh? Do you need a minute, or can I go on? Don't don't be a dick, all right? Like I'm I'm clearly suffering here. Ellipses. Because I can give you a minute. We got plenty of time. Endless time, really. In eternity, if you catch my drift, the ocean said to me. I'm apparently going insane in canon. 
Whoa, not now, Ocean. Sorry, Quite. May I continue? Please, go on. I have dialogue? I have real dialogue? Usually you can only, like... Well, you only have dialogue options. You don't just say shit. Okay, then. As I was... <coughs> I'm really rude, huh? As I was saying... You look down at your feet, ankle deep in the crystal blue water of a newly arrived wave. As the water recedes back into the ocean, it reveals a grotesque discovery. Your toes. Ugh! I mean, one of my toes looks like that. Oh. A decomposing face stares up at you from beneath the sand. All you can do is vomit. A stream of dark bile, bugs, worms, and other ick. Somebody said handsome? Questions race through your mind. Where are you? How did you get here? Who is behind this incredibly charming and well-spoken voice in your head? I mean, in this case, it would just be my own voice, so I appreciate the compliment, narrator. However, answers don't come easy. Your mind is completely blank. What will you do? Dig up that face, close your eyes, or run? You know, I, I'm a bit of, I'm a bit of like a collectathon guy. I think I'll dig up the face. You brush the sand away from the half-buried human head embedded in the ground. Ooh, money! There is no body, just this head. As you pick it up, flakes of skin fall to the ground. The jaw falls open, revealing a gold coin sitting on the rotting tongue of the poor dead soul. I don't know, he doesn't look that broken up about it. Like, he's smiling even though his eyes falling out of his skull. Like, I, th I just, this guy seems like he's got a pretty good outlook on life, all things considered. For somebody who's dead, he's living a really fulfilling life. Getting your hands dirty, I see. I like that. You're a take charge type. Ooh, a doubloon. You examine the gold coin, happily distracted from what has otherwise been an extremely confusing morning. I would replace the word confusing with traumatic. The sun beats down on you, drying your clothes. You check your pockets, but they're empty. That background noise, it just feels like bugs crawling over my ears. Not a fan. <laughs> you check your pockets, but they're empty. Plenty of room for a gold coin, you suppose, and so you deposit it. Why, that's a nice coin you've got there. What if you were to spend it right now? Nah, sorry. I'm a strong. I'm a firm believer in stacking my paper. I'm, I'm getting my 401k account. I'm investing this shit. No thanks. Look, I'm gonna level with you here. That coin you found? It's mine. I dropped it yesterday, and I've been looking all over for it. Dropped it into a dead person's mouth? Could you just give it back? No. Psh, be that way, then. Your mind doesn't have a chance to linger any longer on your current situation, as you feel something soft bump into your foot. Wilson! When you look down, you find a volleyball sitting in the sand there next to you. You stare down frozen. A voice calls out from behind you. Little help, please. You turn around, and what you see is waiting for you. Your jaw hits the ground. <laughs> I need to, uh... Oh my god. They're literally gorgeous. Uh, she's missing, uh, she's missing a bit of thigh. That's kind of a deal breaker for me. I'm, I'm, I'm big on thighs. Sorry, guys. Four gorgeous monsters stand halfway between you and a well-tended volleyball court. You know, in some ways, this is literally just monster fucker dating sim again. <coughs> I, 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 need, I need to pull up for reference. DVD dating sim designs versus game. I, I need to see what they look like in the original game. Like, good God. Like, they are all, like, incredibly attractive right here. I, th I feel like I'm going for this guy the most, personally. The, like, the left side of this, of this collage, of this split, of this spread, has my attention the most, personally. That's just me. That's just me. All of them look like they could snap my, uh, spine in half in a, in a good way. Yeah, that's fair. Four gorgeous monsters. Each of them oozes with undead energy, a magical aura reaching out and penetrating you via your eyes. Me when I get skull fucked twice. Your heart begins to race. Curiosity, fear, desire. You can't help but stare at those casually dressed, let's call them killers. Serial killers, you might say. A serial killer dating sim, you might say. I don't know, not to be judgmental, but that's just the energy they put out there. So many competing feelings rush through your mind at once that you're completely paralyzed. Hello? Let me look up what the Trapper looks like in the game. The Trapper, DVD. 
Th this is the trapper as he appears in in Dead by Daylight. Kind kind of kind of a kind of a departure from the original design, if you ask me. Let, let me. I, I just need for reference, and also for the video's sake. Um, this is what the Huntress looks like. Fucking not the same at all. Jesus. Like, look at that. They, 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 you know, they really, they really, you know, played around with the proportions, I'll say. They took some creative liberties. There are weird days, and then there's this. All you can do is look down at the ball and back up at this monstrous lineup of, well, literal monsters. Sexy-ass monsters, though. What do you do? Kick it back. Say no thanks. Toss it back. Say nothing. Do nothing. I don't want to get on these guys' bad side. I'm going to toss it back to show, like, how, like, cool and hip I am. You bend down and grab the ball and show my humongous ass chicks to all four of them, making them all blush instantly. It's warm from sitting in the sand on this beautiful day. When you give the ball a toss, it arcs beautifully through the air and lands right in Huntress's hands. Not bad, stranger. Oh, gosh. Huntress's muscles ripple as she grips it in her hand. You look up and down, considering what it might be like to be held tightly in those strong arms. Warm, perhaps. Maybe a little sweaty. But that's okay. It's a natural. Try hard much? I, I, I need I need to... I need to... Do, the spirit. That's the other one. The spirit DVD. Yeah, this is what... This is what she uh, looks like in the game. Very, very uh, the ring. Very exorcist. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I do... She's got her full thigh in this, though, like, so I don't know why she's just, like, missing it here. Try hard much, bleh. They're speaking directly to you, but you still can't bring yourself to reply. You're entranced. When you snap out of it, you realize that everyone has gone back to the volleyball court. And here I am, standing like, like a fucking dummy. Alone again, you look across the beach as these strange residents who casually bat a volleyball back and forth, happily ignoring your intrusion on their private beach. Would you be frightened? Worried? Excited? I did refer to them as killers, not to give too much away. But at the same time, damn, they are looking very appealing in their own way, and nobody so much as lifted a blood-soaked finger in your direction. Don't be scared, quite. You were made for this. This is literally my job. It's literally my job to do this. God fucking damn it. Well, geez, if the spooky ocean boy says not to be scared, I'm sure it's all gonna work out. With no good reason not to, you decide to head over and see what happens next. Is the ocean a dateable option? You know... If you think about it, the ocean is a serial killer. In fact, it's a very mysterious monster and beast on its own. We know so little about the ocean. We know so little about what goes on at the bottom of our oceans compared to how much we know about space. The ocean has a mind here. I would say in a lot of ways it, 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 is, a, it is a monster, a, a serial killer. I want to fuck the ocean. And not in like a... Not in like a... Not, not in like a metaphorical, her pussy was as wet as the ocean kind of way. Just... I'm sticking my dick in that water. It seems like you derailed the volleyball game just by showing up. You derailed the game by showing up, nitwit. And I guess you're also a nitwit. Look, it's best to just go with what Trapper says when he says it. That's a policy I hold for pretty much anyone who always seems to have fresh blood on their hands. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all just a game. Existence, that is. Besides, you seem a lot more interesting than a silly game. Oh boy. What's your deal? What brings you here? You mean they're here to do more than distract from my total domination? Beep sigh. That was Wraith. That sigh means he was done with this game too. Alright, I need to look up. The Wraith is the last one we need reference for. I would say the Wraith... Give me a second, I'm looking for a full body. He's arguably hotter in the game. In the original Dead by Daylight. J just it pure, purely preference. Like He's arguably more attractive here. Like, that's just me. Don't get me wrong, he, like, this iteration's great. This is nice, but... I don't know, I don't know, I just, I just like, I just like this costume aesthetic. Smash! <laughs> Emergency, um, self-report. Either that or he saw a butterfly or something. Look, I don't care why the slack-jawed moron is here. That's just mean, man! I just want to know, can I kill them or not? You know, you can't. At least not yet. Oh yeah, not yet. Hey, Quite, you might want to know to, you know, say something. Actually, never mind. There will be plenty of time for that soon enough. Right now, this group has some questions for you. But be warned. Answer quickly and answer well. Oh, fuck. Don't tell me this is the lore segment. Dude, I might be fucked right about now. I might be fucked right about now. I need to blow my nose preemptively. <laughs> Apparently, if you get this wrong, 
I think this is the part where I get fucked. This is a timed quiz and will be very important later, so I'm screwed! Very important. Or not important in any way whatsoever. Probably that one. I can't remember. How attractive would you say you are? Uh, let's say... Mm, very. I'd say I'm very attractive. That's what you think very attractive is compared to this? Trapper flexes his muscles are so tight you can practically see the blood running through his veins. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Invisibility, flight, super strength? Super strength just seems like the most uh, applicable. Super strength would be cool. Strength isn't all about muscles. True strength is up here. You expect Tra Trapper to point his head, but instead he taps one of his bulging, bulging shoulders. It's specifically in these muscles. Nobody gives a shit about your calves. That's just not true. Do not skip- tra Terrible advice, Trapper. Like, do not skip like that. They're a very important part of the equation. What was your best subject in school? History. It was- it was unironically history for me. History? Nice. It's important to know what came before so we're not doomed to repeat humanity's mistakes. I mean, we will anyways, but still. What's your favorite animal? Cat, dog, mustelid. Mustelids, 100%. Be honest, you have no idea what a mustle it is and you're hoping it's some secret answer that results in a hilarious easter egg, right? Because there is no easter egg, it's just another word for ferrets and stuff like that. Well, I'm rather fond of ferrets, so I'll take it. Like, I, this is not exactly a loss for me. What's your favorite color? Blood, blue, red, three-day-old corpse! Nobody would expect me to pick this, so I'm gonna say three-day-old corpse. That's a pretty edgy answer, right? I'm pretty dangerous, I talk about corpses, no biggie. No, I'm, it's because of spring travel. Dude's older than three day old. Those are no good to me unless they're frozen. You'd be surprised by how quickly good meat can spoil. Or maybe you wouldn't be surprised? I'm still getting to know you. What's your dream job? Astronaut? Not working at all sounds pretty good. Like, if I could never fucking see you guys again, that'd be dope. Like, holy shit. If we get to do what we really want, why work at all? It takes a lot of courage to break free from society's expectations to climb the ladder. Only she could spin laziness into some kind of grand crusade. These damned millennials. Ah, uh, he's a fucking boomer, goddammit. Best flavor of ice cream? Vanilla, chocolate. I'm a vanilla guy, personally. Vanilla? My favorite flavor is pain. Overrated. Same. Same here. And the Wraith isn't sure. Mine is vanilla. Swirled with pain. Hey, we- I got more in common with Wraith so far than anybody else. He's taint-filled? No, no! I think mint chip is the greatest flavor ever conceived. But enough about ice cream, am I right? Literally no one asked you, bud. Hold on a second, this reminds me. I am right. Always. It's a lesson you should learn before we go too much further. Do what I say if you want to survive. Pick mint chip. Thanks for the sub, Sadie Smart. We're teaching lessons now, Raider Raider? You, you rascal. Kill or be killed is the rule on this island, even for faceless voices. Hey, that's me! Tell me, what's the best flavor of ice cream? I'm sticking to my guns. I'm sticking to my guns. The best flavor is vanilla. You got a reading comprehension problem? I just told you mint chip was where it's at. You almost bought yourself a game over there, buddy. That's right. I can end your life whenever I want. I'm in control, so don't you forget it. If I say you like mint chip, you like mint chip. Now try it again. Tell me, what's the best flavor of ice cream? Triple down. The best flavor is vanilla. A rebel, eh? Not in my dating sim. You have to understand. It feels very good to end someone else's game. You should try it sometime. Oh. Huh. It, it, okay. I, I guess I gotta... <laughs> Fuck, now I gotta do this whole thing over again. Time to skip dialogue. I simply have to remember my answers. I, I'm, like, decent at that. Let's just fucking breeze through all this stuff real quick. Favorite color, three-day-old corpse. Uh, not working at all. Vanilla. I never read, me neither. The best flavor is mint chip. So obedient. I think you're gonna do just fine. He, he called me, he called me obedient and I felt some type of way. I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Anywho, now that they know so much about you, I'm sure the group wants you to start getting to know them. I'm Trapper. I pretty much run things around here. I'm the smartest, richest, strongest person on this whole island. Yeah, and then I wa- and then I walked in. And suddenly it was me. I don't like losers. If you want to know what a loser is, say hello to Rain. Hi, I'm Rain. I'm nothing like everyone else. 
Yeah, you have, like, good hair. I like nice people and loathe big dumb idiots. Hey, what's up? I'm Spirit. I don't like most things. I don't really hate most things either. It's not worth my time. The things I do hate, I really hate, you know? Based on my personal observations, life is nothing but suffering. And society is carefully calculated lie to keep everyone subservient to those in power. It's better to choose to just not take part. Jeez, it's like she was murdered by society. She hates it so much. Oh, no, wait, I'm remembering Spirit's story now, and that's almost exactly what happened. Here are the 50 bits. Hey, I'm Huntress. Don't let these bummers get you down. She seems like the most life-enjoying person out of the bunch so far. There are lots of fun to be had on this island, along with lots of love. Yeah, there is, if you know what I mean. Grow up. Grow a body. <laughs> I've explained this a thousand times. I'm dead, but I'm not a literal ghost. I just create a trail of fog. I'm not made of it. Whatever, fog body. That seems like a slur. Immediate, like immediately, Trapper is just three strikes on the boomer count. That's not nice. He's not nice. You love it. Only sometimes. Ew, really? That's disgusting. That's why she likes it. Don't speak for me. I also hate it. Stop speaking entirely, actually. For the first time ever, I agree with Wraith. Let's move on, otherwise they'll do this all day. Besides, if I know this crew, and I do, they'll want to show off soon enough. If we're done playing, let's do something else instead. For once, I actually agree with Meathead. I say we go to my yacht. It's the massive boat docked nearby. I'll give everyone a taste of true luxury and power. Wraith rolls his eyes. Don't mind him. He just hates fun and happiness. No, I hate the endless, desperate, soul-crushing pursuit of wealth, the way it's flaunted needlessly, and the cruelty it engenders. Huh. Kind of based. Speaking of, like, flaunting wealth, did I get- did I show you guys the fucking Darksaber replica I bought? This thing was not cheap. Dude, listen to the noises it makes. It, you, you swing it. It fucking... It like... It fucking... It makes noises! And it's glowing in the dark! Y'all ain't seen it. I gotta use this in a video to wipe it off, man. This thing was expensive. Like, legit. I'm definitely not flaunting uh, pointless wealth. Definitely not. OMG noise, so true. What about hanging out by the pool? I find the water calming. Simple, beautiful. Hey, what about our volleyball game? We can exercise and have fun as a group. Are you all serious? There's a perfectly good lounge to chill out at right here. I'm tired, and besides, I hate being in the sun. Where do you want to go? Hmm. I'm kind of feeling the pool. I'm kind of feeling the pool. I want to I wanna hang with Wraith a little bit. You know, just, just, just get the room, that's all. This is the yacht. This is volleyball. It's the lounge. I thought, dude, I could have sworn fucking Super Rich Kids by Frank was a better play. I just heard like those piano ones and I was like, what? Turn the music down? Yeah, it got, sorry. I think I might've boosted the audio on accident. Is this better? I'd be down for a dip in the pool. Whoa, the pool? You you actually want to go to the pool? I, uh, well, I mean, sure, why not? I've got good ideas. What's wrong with my ideas? The pool is great. Everyone knows that. All over the world, if people agree on one thing, it's that pools are great. Except in Britain. Look, we've got a whole ocean right here, and they still put in a pool because pools are just, you know, great. It's a real special treat. And you thought it was bad when he stayed quiet. Hold on. What the fuck are these? For just one moment, this is Dwight and Claudette, our activities coordinators. They're also the cooks, waiters, bartenders, janitors, and every other job. They're the only help remaining on the island. This place we call Murderer's Island. Cue dramatic and musical flourish. Very cutesy. None of the others survived. Fucking wearing those little those slutty little short car cargo short shorts. Little, little whore. Little whore, Dwight. Look at you. Ahem. Survived the interview process, I mean. Hence why we shall refer to them as survivors with a capital S. Thanks for the sub, eh, Sparrow? She kind of hot? Yeah, they both got a bed. Sorry, anyway, I should probably let Dwight and Claudette do their mandated jobs. They sure look happy, but they're vibrating with a nervous energy that is starting to give me the creeps. 
We will now escort the group to the venue of your choosing. However, in the future, we recommend writing for us to present you with your options whenever possible, and don't just run off to the various activities unsupervised. We don't have much autonomy around here. The least you can do is allow us to do our job. The most you can do is help us get off this I- Dwight? Yes, pardon me. Please follow us. Yes, na hey, narrator? Yeah, something I can help you with? Those two, Claudette and Dwight. Did they just start to mention something about wanting to escape? Is escape an option? Should I be trying to escape? Escape? Them? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I think you're mistaken. It seemed like Dwight was asking for help to get off this island, though. Oh, right, that. Yeah, that's true, he was, but he just meant that he wants to get to the other vacation island getaway. A couple miles south of here, it has much fancier accommodations. It's one of those big corporate outfits, quite exclusive, where all the famous celebrities hang out. So that's where I should be. I'm a celebrity. I'm famous. I, I was hanging out with Jay Biebs the other weekend. Very luxurious. Doesn't quite have the charm that Is Island has, though. Trust me, you wouldn't want to go there. With all the money comes a lot of restrictions. This is where you belong, with the gutter trash. Now off you go, it's time for an activity. On this island, your decisions matter, mostly, when I agree with them. Not like that other island. So what'll it be? The pool. I want to go to the pool. Wraith moves ahead to the pool at a pace that could almost be considered jaunty if a creature so lanky that it appeared to be made entirely of elbows and ankles could jaunt. Uh, what's going on with Ray's face? Is that a smile? Is that what a smile looks like when he does it? What do you mean? He's incredibly cute and endearing. Why are you bullying him? What can I say? Being enveloped by water is comforting. It's quiet and ominous and you know. Wraith looks back over each shoulder to make sure no one besides you is within earshot. The fire can't get me! <laughs> Super noble stuff here. Oh, great. It's Charlotte. It's Claudette and White. What do these two want? Since where everyone's at the pool, we figured we'd bring over some of our most popular pool accessories. Wait, which one of these is particularly interesting to you? Basketball hoop. It's gotta be the foam noodles. Come on. I'll take a foam pool noodle, please. Like, these things were goaded back in the day. You know how pools have those, like, jets that, uh, like, blow water out of them to, like, kind of keep it pressurized or whatever, or, like, temperature controlled? Did any of y'all, like, take the noodle and then, like, stick it on the end of that? And then it would, like, you could, like, fucking shoot it like a laser at other people in the pool? That was, that was, that was like, the, the number one use of them. Plus, you could use them as floaties. You, you could, like, whack the shit out of each other with them. It's just a multi-purpose tool. It's like the Swiss Army knife of pool toys. Ah, foam pool noodles. Who doesn't love combining wetness and blinding pain? All the fun of a whip with the bonus smell of industrial solvent. Trapper grips a pool noodle in his hands, tightly wringing its would-be noodle neck until a cute little squeak sounds. My favorite. Maybe you're not as dumb as you look. Huh. You frolic with each other, trying not to give each other welts. How fun. Wait a minute. The, waiter near the water near your leg just got warm. Um, Trapper, did you pee in the pool? It's important to establish dominance when you enter a new place. Call him out. When in Rome. And when in Rome. You ease all your muscles and the tension leaks right out of your body. Oh, hey guys, has anyone seen my... Thanks for the sub, Painter Goaty. Oh, fuck. And there goes Wraith. I guess not everyone's that into peeing into the pool. Weird. For a waking nightmare, you could almost believe that you're starting to relax a bit and forget about how much you can't remember. It's as if the sun's very rays have a calming effect on you. Your body tranquilized by the soft light from overhead, coupled with the cool breeze rolling in from the sea. And you're not alone. I feel recharged by the gentle warmth of the ocean's caress. How is he making his shirt do that all the time? Like he's blinking in real time, but this is just unaffected by gravity. It was a little too warm. You, that might have been my fault. Also, this is the pool. This is a pool, not the ocean. Okay, everyone, just let him finish. Thanks, quite. I know this probably doesn't seem like me, but would anyone like to play a game of Marco Polo? Yes, I love games. I'll go first. Someone blindfold me. Of course, Trapper has a blindfold ready to go. It's as if he had it in his hands before you even smoke. Why the fuck would I go first? It's like I'm trying to die. It's like... The character... When I'm not in charge of the, the decisions my character makes, he's a fucking dunce. Apparently, clearly. Ugh, and he, did he just wink? And did you just bite your lip? I did not! I, I did fucking not! Good thing you're getting reined in, because it sure seemed like you were about to act up. Mini games consist of two parts. On top, a pointer which rotates in a clockwise direction. And on the bottom, a target you're going to be pointing at. Sometimes the target is immediately visible, sometimes it's hidden until the pointer arrives. 
Press the space bar to stop the pointer while over the target to win. Fatal end of the target and you will lose. To achieve a perfect success, land on the start of the target area, not the end. Okay, you ready to play or would you like them to repeat that? I think I got it. Ready. Hey, away we go. It's time to feel around. Go get him, tiger. Got his ass. Holy shit, I'm literally the best. This is just my Friday Night Funkin' Rhythm Games skills coming in. This game is just like Friday Night Funkin' if you think about it. Perfect. Perfect! Holy shit. I'm so fucking good at this. Not bad. Perfect! I- oh my god, I'm literally crushing this. That was pretty good, quite. Holy shit. Literally cracked. Literally cracked. I'm doing crack cocaine right now. That was pretty good, quite. No, it wasn't. Don't lie. Just ignore him. You've just been thrown into a very weird situation and, uh, you held your own. I respect that. That was a good game. I say we celebrate by throwing this waiter, whose name I forgot, into the pool. Defend Dwight. Have to come on. Have a little fun, man. Have a little fun. It's not like I'm a human or are going to be alive for much longer. Hilarious. Bowling truly is the gift that keeps on giving. You grab Dwight's legs and help Trapper give him the heave-ho. You know what? Sorry. I can't pretend you to support you on this one. Only Trapper is the sadistic. I know it's in good fun or whatever, but not on my Murderer's Island. Yeah, that's right. This place is really called Murderer's Island. But that doesn't mean we're cool with bullying. You're on thin ice, friend. I'm no expert, even though I'm an omnipotent narrator. I probably should be. But I think that means it's time for the next activity. The illusion of choice. You may bully him, but the narrator will stop you like a boring hall monitor. Seems like next activity is mealtime? How quaint. You were expecting what? Capture the flag? Do you know how complicated it is to run a game like that? Much more so than sitting and talking. You arrive at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around. What were you expecting? Some kind of grand hall with a huge banquet table? This ain't some prestigious fantasy epic like you'd find on cable. Dwight and Claudette usher you to your seat, but there's very limited seating directly around you. Uh oh, great, terrific. It seems that everyone wants to sit next to you. I mean, who wouldn't, you know? Who wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I am me. I am world famous, quite. The YouTuber that every single person ever has heard of. Even better is that they don't want to sit next to certain other people either. To start, no one wants to sit next to Trapper. Meanwhile, he refuses next to sit to Wraith or Trickster. Who the fuck? Oh yeah, Trickster is here? Surprise. Yeah, well, they don't call him Expectator? I'm sorry, even I get nerves around crowds of killers, and my whole shtick gets a little flustered. Hey there, you're looking good quite. Real good. Who, who is the Trickster? Is, the, is this another dateable character? He's, he's just like some hot Asian guy. It, canonically, he's just some hot Asian guy. Legit. And we literally can't let Huntress and Trapper sit together. No, seriously, their arms are too big. They can't fit at the table if they sit side by side. Look at this. We can't even fit everyone on the screen at the same time. You'd probably think it was an error, but it's not. It was completely intentional. Let that be a lesson to you. Every error you think you see is a choice. Got that? Okay, Dwight and Claudette are directing traffic. You sit on one side, the rest of them will sit opposite you. Huntress and Trapper can sit at the ends with their enormous sexy arms. Now that everyone is seated, we can begin dinner. Tonight's meal was prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for over 12 hours over a spit. We hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Hey, you didn't actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? It's meat. Seasoned with a specific number of special herbs and spices that we simply can't divulge. My favorite. Meat is good. Meat is murder. Oh, he's a fucking vegan. God damn it. God damn it. You're a murderer. Why do you care if it's murder? Which, you know, considering what you've been up to, who are you to get so judgy now? I'm just, I'm just sharing facts. I need to murder something to eat its meat, so that's like, technically true. Technically true is the best kind of true. Okay, enough yapping. Let's eat. Hey, Quite, you thinking what I'm thinking? It's going to be a person on that spit, right? Or several parts of overlapping people, perhaps. I haven't seen many pigs wearing palm tree button-down prints, you know? When you look closely at the spit, you spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fabric sandwiched between layers of meat. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours. Why are you proud of cooking a human? A fellow human at that. Without properly stripping it out its non-edible parts. Like, you guys just suck at this. 
12 hours and you left fucking for like printed shirt on? And we do literally everything on this island. Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. You're not carving up this delectable meal. Wow, he's right for a change, because I am with my broad axe. It's the perfect tool for easily chopping everything in twain. First, who says twain? Sometimes I swear it's like we all come from completely different historical eras. Thanks for the five gift subs spaced out, Frog. Second, I'll handle this with my cleaver. Fast, powerful, and clean. At least it's clean with the meat is cooked. No blood. Ugh, you two are ridiculous. In a ridiculous bicep swinging contest. Enough. Grow up. Obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option. Obviously. The hell it is. Well, I'll show you both my katana and send you to actual hell if you'd like. Please stop. Please. I hate when we fight. Or talk. Or even when we look at each other in the eye. I can do it. I have the skull of Azeroth. Great. Instead of slicing it up, you can club it to a second death. Hey, quite. I know this isn't what you want to eat, but hurry up and volunteer to carve up Felix. I mean, dinner. Are we eating PewDiePie? I'm scared to have an answer. Otherwise, this will go on for hours. No hyperbole. They once argued over who had the most effective weapons for 72 hours straight. And it doesn't matter which one does it. When they're done, they will take even longer cleaning their weapon, all while explaining the value in maintaining your tools. Despite being a bunch of cold-blooded killers, for some reason they're always terrified of tetanus. Hey, why don't you just let me carve up dinner? Splendid idea. We'd hate for it to get cold. He hated when it got cold. Here's a machete, freshly sharpened. Mini games consist of two parts on top of pointer which rotates in a clockwise direction. Is is every video is every mini game the same each time? To achieve a per Is every mini game the same mechanically? Mm. <coughs> <coughs> Alright, Friday night funkin' skill check. Ready to play? Ready. Away we go. Slice. Oops, that was pretty lame. Not bad. Perfect. Uh, incre inc incredibly embarrassing. Perfect. Could have been better. That was pretty good. I'd like to see what you could do with a less clumsy weapon. Yeah, I said it. Machetes are dumb. Dinner is finally served. For real. Thanks for the sub breaks. Appreciate it. Spit out some mucus. <coughs> the sounds, especially coming from the mass killers when they eat, which involves lifting their mask and shoving food up behind them, are nasty. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. She's the only one who seems to really be embracing the being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell, I mean. Come on, we're still trying to be mysterious here. You think, you think mystery comes easy? Claudette and Dwight aren't the only ones who have been working their asses off to make this night perfect. Well, at least they're lifting their masks. This is only 99% as disgusting as it could be if they just tried to match stuff through here. Spirit, why aren't you hungry? The two best things about being dead is not having to eat. That's only one thing. Think about it, quite. Number two is no number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow. You might have noticed, but I'm mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in a spectral form. She's just like me, for real. She's just like me, for real. She's a floating spectral body. With prosthetic body. That's a... Oh my god. This could be, this could be the one. Oh wow. Do you see how deep this cut on my abdomen is? I don't think my digestive tract connects anymore. Between the food and the behavior of this gr the group, this might be the worst meal in history. But even worse is they're staring at you. You're not eating. They don't like that. I think they want an explanation. What do you want to tell them? This is gross. I'm sorry. Look at that seagull. Should I should I be all like cute and embarrassed and say, God, oh, shucks, guys, I've never eaten a person before. It's my first time. Seagull? I, I just don't think the seagull's gonna do very well. I think it might get me in more trouble than not. Look at that seagull. Want to watch me eat it? Uh, gotta apologize. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be very abashed and like put, like poke my pointer fingers together, all nervous. Like, I'm actually it's not the food of the company. I'm just super self conscious of how I look when I eat. 
I was just pretending to be grossed out by dinner, so I'd have an excuse not to chew in front of everyone. Sorry if that made things awkward. I'm actually extremely hungry. Yeah, watching people eat is gross, but try not- but try to relax and not worry what anyone thinks. It's so important to always remember people are watching you, judging you, definitely not ignoring you. Right, guys? Is anyone listening to me? Typically, a group that includes one if not more cannibals staring at you with meat juice dripping from their chins would be quite scary. However, right now, you've barely been able to keep your head up, let alone get scared and run away. I'm a narrator, not physician, so please don't take this as medical advice, but I'm pretty sure you need to eat to stay alive. Oh hey, it's me again, your friend, mentor, and guide. Narrator to the narrator, the ocean. Not sure how I feel about this characterization, but I'll allow it. I brought you here, and I might be the only one who can help you now. There's only one thing you must do to survive. You have to figure out why you're really here. Some monster penis and or monster cooch. It seems pretty damn straightforward, I'm not gonna lie. Like, it, it can't be, it's not that hard of a conundrum. No one can tell you, not unless you follow the right path, or at least a right path. There's too many of those to count, hopefully you pick at least one of them. Because there are even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise, others lead to something even worse. Starting scenes over and having a fast forward back to where you were, am I right? But this place holds many secrets, even from itself. But the one thing that truly matters can only be learned if you answer the most important question. Why are you here? Why are you here? Answer that and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Vague, mysterious, I gotta give it up to the Ocean's character. That's some quality early game storytelling. This is, this is the, the writers beating themselves off. Hold on, I'm back. One more piece of advice. You've made many choices by now. Some of them I liked, some of them I did not. It's in your best interest to make more choices that I like. You wake up to find Trapper holding your limp body, gingerly pouring cool water in your mouth. That's sweet of him. Uncharacteristically. You had me worried there, passing out like that. I thought maybe you died. That may- that would have been terrible. Nobody dies on this island without any killing them. You hear that? Nobody. Thanks, I guess? Don't mention it. I mean that. Don't mention it. Someone might think I take care of you. Or I think I care of you. That can't happen. I've got a reputation to uphold. I'm starting to understand, I think. When you went down, it looked like you hit your head on the edge of the table. If it were me, the table would have been the one to crack open. I'm sure it really hurt you, though. So I figured a little ocean air might help wake you up, and I brought you down by the water. That's really thoughtful of you. What? A magnificently muscular, wealthy, artistically gifted Adonis can't also be thoughtful? I... Don't answer, because it's obvious. Adonis was a pussy. Killed by a boar? Get out of here with that garbage. I do find myself in an unusual position, though. Despite the overwhelming probability that I'll eventually find myself standing over your lifeless corpse, I don't want you dead just yet. So I'm here to talk to you, like a regular human person. And right now, I'm worried that I might be coming off a bit too... forceful. I know my mere presence can be intimidating. Yeah, a little like me in real life. But I don't want to get the wrong- I don't want you to get the wrong impression about me or how I feel about you. So I'll just put this out there. I might possibly like you. I can't say that about everyone, or really anyone else on this island. There's something different about you. You aren't like the others. Henforce, I think it's time I shared something with you I haven't shared with anyone in a long time. It's a big part of who I am, and I think you're ready for it. You watch as Trapper reaches into his singlet and pulls out... ...some sort of rolled up scroll of paper. He grips it firmly in his hand. It's one of my sketches. I don't know if you know this, but I love to draw. The arts have always been a passion of mine. Would you like to see it? I feel like if I say no, I'm gonna get my arm chopped off, so I, I should probably say yes. Thanks for the sub, Sea City. Yes, I'd love to. I'm so excited you're ready to share this with me. Trapper does not unroll the paper and show it to you. He simply stares at you and watches your smile soften and fade. And the longer he stares at you, the closer he seems to get. What an interesting response. Thanks, I hope. Trapper looks at you, a piercing look even through his mask. He smirks, but it's not clear why. Then he turns and leaves. Just as things are really heating up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you, and you quickly spin around, ready to fend off whatever new danger has popped up on this strange island. Only to find that it's Dwight and Claudette sprinting across the beach, clipboards in hand, with their weight which they're waving in the air above their heads. It's very important that we stick to the itinerary. This is my least favorite type of vacation, man. Like, I hate traveling with people who are like, we gotta maximize the amount of stuff we're doing when we go. I'm like, no, bro, stop fucking stressing me out. I'm on vacation. I'm like fucking nervous enough at work. I don't need that shit here. And attend, and attend each event as scheduled. Playing sick for cute flirt points was not a part of this evening's activities. How about blowing your brains out with a fucking shotgun, huh? Huh? 
that's strictly slotted in for after campfire story time. At this rate, we'll be late. Playing sick? No, I was... No time for excuses. Well, there is, but they're scheduled for after what comes after the flirting. Go, go, go! Once everyone is gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly make an announcement. We're not gonna blame anyone in particular, but someone, and we're not gonna say who, so don't worry you, hasn't been sticking to the schedule. That means that we're behind on time for evening activities, and we'll only have time for one person to share their special spooky nighttime story. Just one story? But story time is my favorite activity! This is a narrative-heavy experience! You're telling us that only one person gets to share? How will we decide who? Oh great, we have to decide as a group? That never goes well. Whoever did this, step up now. I swear I won't be angry or merely ch chop your head clean off. No fuss, no muss. Voice trembling, you realize this is probably it for you, but you embrace your faith. Sorry, everyone. I think they're talking about me. To be honest, I still don't understand how this whole schedule thing works. I guess I lost track of time while I was passed out. Been there before. Even though it's taking some pressure off me, which is an absolute dream of come true, is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anything here ever happened on schedule even once? Damn it, Donald. If you try to fix the authority gimmick one more time, so help me, I'll snap your head off so quick and then I'll drown you in his blood, Cynthia. Fuss and Muss are back on. You two know I love to hack, slash, and slice. Are those developers? We all know you love to kill. It's almost all you talk about. Nobody named any names. Who even knows any names? Not us. I renounce my name. Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who even knows anymore? Call me nobody! But we still gotta get started on tar story time, so... Wait, who do you think should go? Ah, oh, damn it, that's a name. Please pick somebody quickly so that this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. Hmm. Are we focusing all our eth efforts on Wraith, or are we diversifying our dating pool? How, 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 um, strategic do we want to play this, is my question. Spirit? Spirit or Wraith? I'm between Spirit and Wraith. I'm between Spirit and Wraith, personally. Wraith. I'm thinking Wraith, too. I'm thinking Wraith. I choose you, Wraith. Whoa, whoa. This entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful with the catchphrases, will ya? I'm not really one for scary stories. Life is scary enough as it is. I thought you said this is your favorite segment. You literally carry around a skull and a spine as your little prop. All the other killers laugh. Wraith holds up his skull and gazes into its hollow, dark eye sockets. If you're looking for something Shakespearean in the story, look elsewhere. This is a tale of madness, of staring at the soul of death and never returning. Ah, yes. I don't have a good reference to make here, sorry guys. Once upon a time, a young man worked at a junkyard. This man was quiet, kept to himself, just wanted to avoid trouble. While the boss dealt with clients, the young man operated the crusher, turning old cars into cubes of twisted metal. One day, right before crushing a car, he noticed something. Blood. Drip, drip, dripping from the trunk. He opened it and found a frightened stranger, bound and gagged. The young man reeled. Was he about to accidentally murder the stranger? How could this have happened? He freed the stranger, who ran off, into the waiting arms of the boss, the owner of the junkyard. Before his shaken employees could tell him about the mistake they had nearly made, the boss took out a knife and swift, swiftly slipped the stranger's throat. It's about his lore? Oh, okay, okay, okay. The young man fell to his knees, unable to comprehend what was happening. As he stared at the ground, too shocked to cry, the boss approached him. Well, what did you do? He asked the boss. I did your job for you. What do you mean? That's my job. That's not my job. My job is to crush the cars. The boss let out a miserable scoff, his face contorting an evil disdain for the pathetic wretch in front of him. Why do you think we're crushing these cars? To save space? Who do you think my clients are? Uh, I don't know, mumbled the young man. Yes, you do, screamed the boss. Deep down, you've always known what was happening here. You just didn't want to admit it to yourself. Your hands aren't clean. My clients gave me money, and I take care of their problems, eliminate their witnesses, tie up their loose ends. Or actually, you do. No, the young man whimpered as the boss towered above him. Yes, you're nothing more than an executioner, and you've reaped hundreds of souls. The young man's body shook with soft spasms as he tried to stop crying. It was when the boss started laughing that it happened. Something in the young man changed. He stood up, now taller than the boss. A faint glimmer of fear overtook the sneer on the older man's face. The young man's face was empty. Empty as he grabbed the boss's throat and dragged him to the car in the crusher. Empty as he picked up the boss and stuffed him inside. 
empty as he slammed the trunk down on him, its stupid fat head sticking out, begging for mercy. Empty as he started the machine, staring at the boss in its sniveling, crying, wet face. Empty as he grabbed the boss's head, dug his fingers in farther, piercing the skin. Empty as he squeezed and pulled. Empty as he heard bones popping and snapping. But when the boss's head, still attached to his spine, pulled cleanly out of its disgusting sack of a body, he smiled. Wraith stares back into the eye sockets of his skull. And that was my favorite episode of Spongebob. It doesn't matter how good you are, how innocent, how kind, how full of love you once were, when you look into the eyes of evil, you will surely go mad. An awkward silence falls upon the room until... Offer effusive praise. <laughs> I fucking like the- I fucking like the bongos when you hover over it. Should I be like positive or like intrigued? Joke about the trauma? I don't know about all that. I don't know if that'll go. I'm gonna make a joke, fuck it. Hey, you said sh no Shakespeare. Pretty sure that's from Romeo and Juliet. Trapper laughs at your callback. Wraith looks down at his- We're going back, fellas! We're going back! I like you quite. Here, have a gold coin. It's my love language. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone sleeves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you see, you hear, is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. A true moment of peace and tranquility lasts for all seven seconds before Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Hey baby, you look lonely. Mind if I join you? He doesn't wait for an answer. I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day, but I want to hear something from a big fish like me. Something special those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. I am the ultimate catch on this island, the only lobster in an ocean of sardines. No one can give you what I can. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of his cryptic clues, but you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Wraith approaches you. Hey, I'm probably not making a great impression, because, uh, I guess that's not really my thing. I just know that if you get to know me, then, I mean, look, the others aren't around, and I really hate this fire pit. I just kind of hate fire in general. Maybe we could go back to the pool and, like, I don't know, whatever, you know. Okay, I didn't, I'm hoping I didn't fuck it up yet. I'm hoping I didn't fuck it up yet. A dip in the pool with Wraith? You've come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow him. An offer like that. Just don't forget our little talk. You and your storyteller friend slip into the water. It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, if some jellic shark comes up and manages to jump from the ocean out of the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion could handle it. Um, hey, do you, do you remember my story? You mean the one you just told, like a minute ago? Yeah. Um, yes? Did you, I mean, like, what did you think of the young man in the story? Do you think he's weird? He's not weird. I would forgive him? I, I'm gonna think he's perfectly reasonable. There's nothing to forgive. Well, I don't think he's weird, but he is bad and I'm deeply upset with him. What? What do you- What do you mean? I did not say that shit! That's not some shit I said! What do you fucking mean? I didn't say that! He didn't have the knowledge he needed to begin with, but what's important is what you do when you have the knowledge once you have it. I fuck it. I didn't say that shit. I didn't say that shit. I can't even undo it because I didn't say it. Motherfuckers. Holy shit. I'm actually seething right now. He's not weird, but I hate you. Oh my god. Oh my god. He didn't have a... In the end, he's no better than the monster he killed. Oh, I see. Well, that makes sense. Um, did that young man remind you of anyone? Fuck this game, dude! Delete the save, do it. I, I need to know. Quit and reload? Yeah, 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 how far back will it push me? How far back will it push me if I restart? Yes. How long ago is it? I can fix- I can save this. Oh, thank God! Oh, thank God! Okay, 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 we can- we can salvage this. We can salvage this. I would forgive him. I would forgive him. What happened to him would make anyone snap. And who knows, what happened in his past to lead him to that point? He was just trying to be good. Yes, that's all he wanted, was to be good. Well, that makes sense. Um, did the young man remind you of anyone? Am I saying yes or yes and no? 
Oh god, this is just making me nervous. Guys, I gotta take an ad break to pee and get all my nerves out. Quandale Dingle here. Quandale Dingle here. Hey everybody, Quandale Dingle here. Hey, hey fellas, I got my uh, water bottle filled back up. I got my cough drops on deck. My bladder freshly emptied. Feel, gotta say, feeling good. Feeling good. Save? It auto saves. I I'm realizing. I insomnia it auto saves. Like, I, I backed up, and it had saved, like, two minutes ago. It saves as you go to each scene. Had us worried. Don't worry, don't worry. We, we have to restart the scene if we fuck it up, but... I, I, yes and no. The middle of the road options... The middle of the road options have not been going super well for us right now, I'm gonna be honest. I think we should, like, commit. I think we should commit. Yes. It's you. It's clearly you. What? No, it's not. You're carrying around the guy's skull inspired with you right now. Wraith looks as Azeroth's skull then into the middle distance. A long silence ensues. You notice the temperature has dropped significantly. Is it cold in the water now, or is it just me? I feel like my toes are turning into ice cubes. Wraith's, Wraith seizes up and squeezes his eyes shut. I can't be here around any cube talk. Not since um, I heard that story from somebody else a long time ago. This story I just told two minutes ago. Exactly, the one that wasn't about me. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna, uh... I should let him come out to it about me on, like, when he's comfortable, I think. I should, I should let him talk about it when he's comfortable. I should let him know I'll support him. But it's on him. It's on, it's, it's, it's completely in his control for whenever he wants to, uh, talk about it. Should, should I do yes and no? Yes and no. Yes and no. I think that's what makes it such a great story. It's unique and surprising, but relatable and familiar. I think we all know someone like that young man. I think we all have a little of him inside us. Wraith giggles. Not a gross way, like you're thinking, but a very silly one. I assume he's imagining a tiny little version of himself dancing around in his own belly, because that's just who he is. I want him dancing in my belly. Sorry, 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 fuck! Oh god, I did it again. Oh fuck. Oh god. 
I can't control it. It just slips out. It 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 it, it, it was it, it wasn't on purpose. It wasn't on purpose. You notice the temperature has dropped significantly. Is it cold in the water now, or is it just me? I feel like my toes are turning into ice cubes. Wraith seizes up and squeezes his eyes shut. Please, I can't be around any cube talk. Not since um I heard that story from somebody else a long time ago. The story you just told us too. To, how do I unmod? <laughs> You're gay, bro. You just figured it out. You just figured it out. It was a Freudian slip, guys. Freudian slip. I didn't mean it. The story. <laughs> exactly. The one that wasn't about me. Usually we'd be nervous that we were about to make things awkward when we barge in. But obviously we couldn't hand hold a candle to whatever was happening here tonight. Either way, it's time for bed. For you, but not for us. After you go to sleep, that's when we party. Thanks for the 50 bits. After spending all day cooped up in those tight little safari-themed resort uniforms, you just know those two rage late into the night. But you're not here to party with them. You've got your own repressed relationships to tend to. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. Don't be a coward, double down. That's what a Freudian slip is. You mean it, don't do that? A Freudian slip is when what you actually means act is what you accidentally say when you meant to lie. So yeah, that me saying it's a Freudian slip was the double down. And then I contradicted it. It's called, um, being epic. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. Looking into the crackling embers, you think about Rake's story about the young man who found out he was part of a sinister plot. What don't you know about your current situation? Is it something that will terrify you? Something that will make you snap? What if you look into the eyes of evil and know, and what if you like it? Before you can dwell too much on your fate, Claudette and Dwight arrive. They're now familiar creepy smiles stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like that lit by firelight. I think these guys are the real monsters on the island, if I'm being honest. They're the real horror entities here. We must apologize for the accommodations. We weren't prepared for another guest, but we're going to make you comfortable or die trying. They hand over a pillow and a blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. Perhaps some music will put you at ease? Just try to keep the volume at a minimum. Our other guests aren't the types you want to rob if they really sleep. Mini games consist of- okay, yeah, yeah. Is it- this uh, here upcoming little game is special, perfect for the less coordinated, because there is no winning or losing. Well, not technically. Wherever the pointer stops, that's your result. I suppose if it doesn't stop where you want it to, that's a bit like losing, but no one has to know if you don't tell them. Okay, ready to put Yeah, sure. Ready. As you relax and look into the fire, the radio begins to fuzz and flicker. You examine it and decide that you might adjust the dial and fix it. That's not good. Let's see what's on this station. No matter how many things you listen to, you still can't sleep. You decide to ask one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're a sleeper. Who would you like to summon to lay to your side as you lay by the fire? Obviously Wraith, but he doesn't like fire, so I don't want to... You know, I don't want to make him uncomfortable, man. I don't want to make him uncomfortable. Like, obviously I want him here. But he's... like that, that's, that's not fun for him. And I want him to enjoy his time, too. Don't sleep, keep the grind. The thing is, I, I feel like I have to, like, if I, if my end game is Wraith, I, I have to, I have to invite him here for the, the ending I want. I remembered he doesn't like fire. Wraith, you can comfort him. We could, like, get away from all this or something, I don't know. The fuck is wrong with your mic? Is my mic fucked up? Is something wrong with my mic or is it that guy's end? Holy shit, you're still alive? Yeah, it's only been like an hour. He can stand in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna choose Wraith, because I think I think I need to in order to progress our love. Wraith, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. I can't really sleep. Oh, that happens to me a lot. Um, okay, don't laugh. Promise? I promise. Um, I guess my secret to falling asleep is listening to the sounds of bells or chimes. Think of it as white noise to drown out anything you might be hearing that's keeping you up. Like what, right? Like those distant screams we can all hear coming from beyond the mountain? If that's some a bit morbid, I guess you could hold on to this chess piece of mine. <gasps> money! 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 
It's a knight. They're brave, like I wish I were. And the horsey is cute. You finally start to feel sleepy, except maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. The dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. It shouldn't still be as spooky. By now you've had a whole day of strange voices in your head, but this one is still undeniably odd. Uh, look, I'm not saying that my feelings are hurt because you chose to swim in some pathetic little teacup when you could have swam in the vastness of an entire, uh, me, I guess. I'm just saying that you've made a foolish decision, and I won't forget it. My feelings aren't hurt. I just lost some respect for you, that's all. Most people do after getting to know me a little bit, so that's not new. You're awake suddenly to see someone looming over you. When you wake up, you find spirit, spirit sitting beside you, reading a worn paperback. Oh, hey, what? Shh, shh. Clearly she had noticed that you're awake, but she hasn't actually looked at you. Seems like she's pretty focused on that book. Shh. She got the anime shit. Not, a, not good. It seems like forever as she stares at the page before finally shoving the book and shutting it down. Oh, you're awake. Yeah, I, never mind. I saw you with the wraith before bedtime. I wouldn't tell you how to live your life, but if you ask me, you could do a lot better. It's completely by accident I even saw them over here. It's not like I was looking out for you or anything. Uh, we got we, the yonderite stereotype, of course, of course. This was simply the best reading light, and the text in my book is very, very fine print, so it's tough to read in the dark. I got the wrong idea. You and I are obviously mind our own business types, not phony look out for each other as an excuse for just being nosy types. Sundere? Sorry, Sundere, not Yandere. Fucking. Yandere is the murder one, right? Sundere is the. It's not like I like you or anything, right? Not Yandere, Sundere. The, the difference. Difference. I got, I, I got my tropes mixed up, sorry. But well, since you're here and I'm here, maybe we've got other things in common? Who knows? Yeah, like we both have massive tits. Mine are, mine are bigger, though. If we spend a little bit... Oh, thank you for the sub, Aiden. If we spend a little bit more time together tomorrow, we might find that, I don't know, we get along. And by get along, I mean exist simply and comfortably without see, feeling any burning desire to assassinate the other person. Or not, whatever. I don't even care. Bye. Goodness and sweet dreams to you, too, I guess. Finally a room, for real this time, maybe. You drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. Hmm. Oh boy. Wait a second, where are we? This isn't- Ah, oh jeez, it's one of those reality show confessional rooms where all the contestants talk directly to camera. Look, I don't need anyone. I've been perfectly fine on my own since my mom died. I eat an all-organic diet of raw deer, bear, and human, and I'm fit as a fiddle. That being said, something about this newcomer makes me think I might be missing out on some huge part of this thing called life. There's always time to turn things around, like that one time I spent day and night searching for food in vain, only to return to my cabin, spent and starving, to find a family of squirrels nesting in my chimney. They were delicious. If I'm being honest, I want to kill just about every person I meet with a mi within a minute of meeting them. Even the few people I can tolerate, I want to see suffer for a long time before I kill them. But this person, for some reason, I would like them to continue living. For now, one false step and... <laughs> well, you know, everyone calls Trapper for a reason. Calls me Trapper for a reason. And they better call me Trapper. Huntress as a woman? Yes. I swear, if I watch this later and you list me as Evan, I'm going to kill the Chiron guy. Yeah, today was fun. I don't want to get ahead of myself or really, um, invest in something that might hurt me, so I don't know. Maybe we'll just see how it goes, or maybe they'll realize I'm not the one for them. They seem pretty smart, so that's probably what'll happen. I gotta learn to go easier on myself. What could love me if I can't love myself? You know, I think I learned a lot about myself today. I always thought I was doomed to be alone for eternity, only by creeping desire for revenge to keep me company. Now I know it. No, Wraith is insecure. He just like Twitch chat for real. You open your eyes. The sun is shining. There's not a cloud in the sky and you feel great. Totally well rested. You're not even suspicious of the fact that you fell asleep by the campfire, but woke up several yards down the beach. Wait, are you on vacation? Was yesterday nothing more than a strange dream? Nope, not a dream. You really are here for another day. Why? I have no idea. You're obviously a weirdo. Speaking of weirdos, I see the rest of the gang is hanging on the beach. This is definitely not a dream. I wouldn't rule out a nightmare just yet, though. At least they're make for a sexy punch, no? And talk about sexy. Here comes Trickster carrying coffee. Morning, beautiful. I thought you might like a cup of joe to start this incredible day off right. This has poison in him. Trickster seems suspiciously cheerful. I'm sure there's nothing nefarious behind his joyful demeanor, though. 
Everyone knows musicians are morning people. I also want to wish you luck. Today is an important one. My only regret is that I won't be a bigger part of it. Budgeting issues. Also, I am just swamped with engagements, especially on the other island. Trickster winks at you. If you want to ask him how to reach the other island, now is the t Never mind, he left. Well, at least he brought me a cup of rat poison. No, wait, don't drink that. What the hell was that? They don't tell him Trickster because he's good on a skateboard. And he definitely didn't get that name because he brings people drinks so they can have a good morning. That was almost certainly not coffee, and I don't want anyone casually poisoning, imprisoning, and torturing you. Yeah. It is so upsetting, honestly so upsetting how goddamn horny your chat is, man. Ethan, you cannot say a goddamn word on this topic. You literally can't say shit. You're a hypocrite. Also, you, you, got, you, gotta, you gotta understand like what they, can't, what, they, what they all found me through. Dating sim videos. Hey man, man, fuck you, fuck you, man. Step to me again. This is supposed to be a tropical paradise. The type of place you give a 5 out of 5, a 10 out of 10, two thumbs up review to not an internable prison of pain. And please make sure to leave a review. It really helps with the algorithms. Just trust me, I'm looking out for you. So can we please move on? Hey, wait a second. How did a possibly omniscient, possibly unreliable narrator physically just knock that coffee at your hand? He's omniscient. This is not parliament, and the floor does not recognize the ocean to speak out of term at this moment. I need no recognition, for I am the ocean. I dominate the land. I submerge those who defy me and become their watery grave. Actually, speaking of graves, I would like to say something. Something of grave importance. He's gonna say something life-threatening, ain't he? Even if this place is an eternal prison of pain, and I'm not saying it is, even a place of extreme horror can still receive a 5 out of thumb, 5, 10 out of 10 thumbs up review. If it was crafted with love and or that, that's the type of thing you're into. You know, the ocean is right. A lot of hard work goes into a place like this. You should really judge it on the artist's intent, and whenever possible, start from the mindset of giving them the benefit of the doubt. Constructing these elaborate simulations, uh, I mean, vacations, is not easy to do. Sometimes there are some small bugs or inconsistencies, but that's just the nature of the process. Perfection is overrated, the universe is filled with mysteries. This game is so fucking meta. It's just like the devs, like, saying, please don't be mean to me, please don't be mean to me. And I don't plan on it, they seem nice. We ought to celebrate those who venture to bear their souls as part of the creative process with the ultimate intent of making things for enjoyment, not be overly critical of them. Are you two trying to sell me on this place actually being good? You don't have to say it like that, especially after I saved you from that poorly put made cup of coffee. Sorry, we, could, we should have been here five minutes ago. They always do this on the second morning. Sad, really. Even if they do make some great points. Oh sure, they make great points, I agree. Can we please move on? Yes, of course. Apologies, quite. The last few minutes aside, have you been enjoying your time here on the island? Yes, I've been having a lovely time. Yes, I'm not suspicious, there's no no option. Yes, it's been really entertaining. Hmm. Yes, for what reason have I been enjoying this? Wait, Dwight is me the fuck? Why are you in the Ethan, if that's you, why are you wearing those little, like, man whore sh cargo short shorts? Huh? Explain yourself. Riding up your ass cheeks like that, you fucking freak. <laughs> you said it was you, not me! Lovely time. The last one. I wear cargo shorts all the time. Ones that go- that ride this high? Yes, I'm not at all suspicious that there's no no option. What an encouraging response! And we're so glad you're not suspicious. Hey Claudette, maybe quite as suspicious because they figured out what they're actually doing here? Zero chance, they're still clicking, even right now, to see how you'll respond. Um... Hey, look at that! Yeah, they don't know anything. It doesn't matter though, Quite. We're so happy to hear you're having fun. I didn't say I was having fun. We're all having fun, Quite. Do you hear us? We're all having fun. We do need to ask you one more question, though. We all had to sign away our rights to say anything negative about this place. Would you please sign this non-disparagement agreement? If I say no, I'm dead, aren't I? Least meta game ever. I, if you think about it, a game like this has to be incredibly meta. Let's like let's let's be honest. No, I will not say anything. God damn it! God damn it! God damn it! They fucking they got me. They got my ass. I, no, I will not say anything negative about this island. You have my word that I quite agree with the terms of this verbal contract. 
Motherfucker putting words in my mouth that I have to read for the sake of my stream. Perfect. Delightful. Excellent. Yes, yes. Hey, quite. it's totally cool if you have constructive feedback. The place to leave that in is a positive re review, because we all know that nobody reads negative reviews of games, or resorts like this. Anyway, I see Dwight and Claudette have gone into a trance, and with the grumbling I hear from your belly, that can only mean one thing. Breakfast. Perfect timing. Everyone rolls into the dining area to lard up those sexy little bellies with pancakes and bacon and so much for maintaining these beach bonds. We're all half naked in a tropical paradise. Can we get some strawberries here? A yogurt? Magic powers will only get you so far. Even, even killers watch their sodium intake. You take your plate and sit down, thinking about yesterday and the whirlwind of feelings you experienced. Danger, dread, disorientation. It was like going through puberty again, except all in one day on a beautiful and mysterious island. It looks like you're not the only one doing some introspection, though. Trapper stands up to talk about how his day went, in case anyone was wondering. Personally, I wasn't. To be honest, I didn't expect you to survive yesterday, so congrats, I guess. Whether you survived today is 50-50 at best. Good luck? Well, that was bizarre. Back to your bre- Nope. Now Huntress steps up to talk about her feelings. This island is treacherous. I don't know what the newcomer thinks they are doing here, but it certainly isn't helping any of us. Whoa, Huntress pretends to be all independent, but is secretly kind of miffed you and her aren't getting along? Thanks for the sub, Ethan. Appreciate ya. Ah well, that surely must be it. No one else would weirdly stand up during breakfast too. And just like that, here comes Spirit. If I look especially well rested this morning, it's not because I slept well. As you know, I'm much too dedicated to finding revenge to ever sleep again, but because you all really left me alone yesterday to be my best not constantly annoyed self, and I thank you for that. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to back to quietly resenting being trapped here with you all while looking cute doing so. Guessing Wraith has had enough time to work up the courage to speak in front of a group. Ah, perfect. There he is. Take us home, Wraith. Oh, hey, that was fun yesterday. Yeah, I mean, like, not like too much fun. That would be weird. But like a, a good, like a good amount of fun. And now they're all looking at you expectantly. Wait, are you supposed to stand up and explain how yesterday made you feel? Uh, I think I need to process everything, process everything by myself. I'll see you all soon. Damn, what a power play. Keep them wanting more. You're getting this game, get at this game, or, uh, sexy, true-to-life experience. This is actually how romance in the real world works. Every, like, dating, every person you meet on Tinder comes with dialogue options. And there's, like, a correct one you say to nail them every time and live happily ever after. That's actually how real life works. Shame you didn't get to eat any breakfast, but so be it. After breakfast, you head to the hot tub by yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was, in short, a lot. Before you get there, though, something catches your attention. You hear that? Who are you addressing? Me? Well, yeah, I guess. That is okay, right? You know, I might be pursuing a relationship with one of these four fine killers, but it feels like the person I'm getting to know the most is you, narrator. It's only okay in so much as it serves to illustrate that you've lost your mind, seeing as I'm not real and all. Yeah, I heard it this time. I think it's coming from behind the pool shed. No, no, stick it in there. A little more, a little more. Oh yeah, that's it, yes. I didn't read that erotically enough. How does that feel? Intense. Nice. Yeah, that feels right. This, this is uncomfortable. Now I want you to take that and put it right- Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. They're building Legos. They're building Legos. That's all, that's all that's happening. Just like that. Exactly like that. I swear I had no idea those two even do, uh, whatever it is they're doing. I'm afraid to look. Please say something so they know you're close by and can hear everything. Oh, uh, wow! Look at this super cool bottle of Trickster brand suntan lotion someone left in a chair. Anyone know where I can buy some? Damn it. Ah, uh, come on. A little privacy, please. Dwight is panting and Claudette has a crazed look in her eyes. Sorry, I didn't know how else to let you know I was here. And that I could hear you, well, you know. No, what? What do you think we were doing? You were doing... I don't know exactly what you were doing, but it sounded like, uh, fun? You think two people trying to find new ways to kill each other in a desperate search to make their own death permanent is fun? Oops. We get five minutes to ourselves every day, and we spend it hoping if we stab each other in just the right spot, we won't get resurrected. I've come to believe that the key is finding the exact place we need to bleed out from, and I believe that place is in our appendix. Why else would it be there? Makes sense to me. Did you actually think we were me and him? Dwight? Ah ha 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 You don't have to laugh that hard. I get it. Wow, Dwight just feels like so fucking like bent up over this man. Poor guy. Glad that lashed even harder. My life is a nightmare, and yet somehow it's never been worse than right now. Let's go, lover boy. I noted all of our in entry wounds in our five minutes is up anyways. Good luck, Quite. You're gonna need it. And hey, if you figure out how to explain this island, please make sure your ghost tells us how. That was both a tragedy and a comedy. A cragmity. 
Shut up. I like it. Anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah. You're heading to the hot tub by yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was, in short, a lot. So for today, ha so far today has been exhausting too. But you're dedicated to achieving a true, centered sense of calm. No drama, no bullshit, just soaking up sun in a heated pool. Today you're on a date with you. Ooh, I like that. I want to be on a date with me. Is it, when are you guys going to make a quiet dating sim? Just like narcissism dating simulator? self sess dating sim? Who would make the first move? And aside from that disturbing thought, all is going to plan until a shadow blocks your precious sun. Spiky tip, like a palm tree is bending over to screw with you. But it's no tree at all, it's... Hey babe. Is that a bat or a dildo? Or a dildo bat. Hey babe. Breakfast was weird, huh? Everyone just getting up and announcing how they're feeling? What's that about? Some kind of forced check-in with the group? I don't like it. Fishy. Kinda lazy. <laughs> Whatever though. Breakfast is dumb. No one should eat before noon or after 4 p.m. Yeah, I do intermittent fasting. You see my abs, by the way? Maybe you can see them later at my private stage on the other island. You know, IP Island, where all the Hollywood celebs hang out. If you play your cards right, I could give you a private show. Catch you around. His abs are pretty amazing, you gotta give him that. And the blow-up bat? Threatening, but adorable. Makes for an interesting silhouette. Genius design. He's a psychopath, just like the rest of them. You don't gotta give him anything, and we're not best friends. Just because we had a little talk about doing a little talking, it's not an open invitation to go smashing the fourth wall every five seconds. Okay, now that the guy is gone and we've got some ground rules established that we're definitely going to abide by, it's time to lay back, take some deep, slow breaths, and nope, another shadow. These people will just not leave you alone. Let's see who it is this time. Oh, it's my favorite. Oh, it's Wraith. That checks out. You two have gotten pretty cozy. Hi, right, sorry if this is uh, too forward, but um, you want to get out of here? I know a place that it's, it's kind of, I mean, it's got, well, it's hard to explain. Actually, it's kind of weird. He's about to take me to another plate of existence, ain't he? You know what? If you want to go somewhere else with someone else, I totally understand. But if you want to see something weird and interesting, um... But no, I guess. You've been around Wraith long enough to realize that this rambling speech was actually him being incredibly brave and asking you out. But before you can decide if you want to go off with Wraith, the Trapper interjects. I demand that you reconsider. Actually, I strongly recommend you do. Wraith is half of the man I am, if that. I could deadlift four of him wrapped together. He can't even say a sentence without getting flustered. That's, that's why I like him. He's off-putting, disquieting, unnerving, bothersome, plus he doesn't even own a thesaurus. I have seven, all leather-bound. Yeah, but you're like a little mean guy. You're like a little bit of a jerk. You're a, li you're a little you're a little rude, is what you are. Tough choice. You weigh your options quickly because you can only go on one date today, and you also don't want to be hacked to pieces for saying the wrong thing. It's always good to remember that these are all cold-blooded killers, but you know what they say. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. I have never once made lemonade in my life. And then die a horrible, wretching, writhing death after drinking it because the lemons were poison. Sorry, this island has really got me tilted. So who will it be? It, it's Wraith. We're going with Wraith. I, I gotta go with Wraith. I gotta boost his self-confidence, like, one positive interaction at a time. You know? Plus, he's got fucking humongous calves. Like, he's sculpted in the way I like him, you know? Wraith? Yes? I picked you. Sorry, I stopped paying attention, and then I thought I was hallucinating, and now, uh, really? Yes, really. Cool! He's a baby. Go get him. This man is a twig? A twig with muscles! What do you mean? Here's my island hangout. This is what I call the cosmic dump. Emphasis on the dump. I know, I know, it's one of those first draft gonna change it later names that it just kinda sticks. Dump is being kind. It's a massive collection of seemingly ancient ruins that simultaneously appear to have been recently abandoned. And a little beat up. There are stone obelisks, strange carvings, ritual tables. Is that a car? It's pretty weird. Like a collection of things from, uh, different, I don't know, places? You look around in awe, then look at Wraith expecting more of an explanation. There is a very long, very awkward pause. Try and look cute? What if I just, like, shove my ass cheeks in the ear to break the tension? Like, uh, you know, just, you know, mood break- mood ice-breaking twerk. He's not a twig, he's a br- that's a full-ass fucking tree, dude! Say- listen. It saves at the beginning of each scene, don't worry, Insomni. There is a hell- uh, a handy autosave feature. Do it. Try and look cute. You dig your toe into the dirt trying to be cute. Wraith is too busy averting his eyes and dying to notice. Okay. We gotta backtrack. 
We're going back in time. Break the silence. So how, what's your, just as you decided to talk, Wraith also worked up the courage to say something. How adorably awkward. You both stop talking, wait a second, then start talking again at the same time. This is hard to watch. Next thing you know, you both start nervously laughing at how awkward this is. Wraith finally makes eye contact with you. And after what seems like an eternity, Wraith finally manages an entire sentence. So, uh, do you, I mean, um, what brings you to the island? I have no idea. You're not going to explain what this weird place is? I think you is too forward. I think you is too forward for Wraith. I don't, I, I think that might, that might scare him off. You're not going to explain what this weird place is? I think that might make him feel like an idiot. I had no idea might also make him feel dumb. Too forward is the way to go, though. It depends on who you're talking to. You and if no backtrack. Yeah, fair enough. You smile cheekily as you practically purr you. Wraith covers his face and excuses himself. You can overhear him doing breathing exercises and getting himself in a pep talk in the woods nearby. Okay, it worked! It worked! It worked! He comes back, blushing. Sorry, I had to check on P. I had to go and P. <laughs> Wraith looks at you with his always sad puppy dog eyes, searching for something to say. Anything to talk about. He clears his throat. I have something very important to tell you. It's about something very special to me. It's not something I tell anyone, but you know how important honesty is to me. I can't expect that from you if I'm not honest in return. Oh great, I bet he's got crabs. It's about my special bell. What? It belonged to my father. He gave it to me before, um, before me and my, he and my mother, well, they had to go away. If I was ever in danger, I was supposed to ring this bell. It, it didn't really work, but it's all I have of my family with me. Wow, Wraith, thank you for telling me. Wraith pulls it out. I'm sorry, he pulled what out? The bell, you perv. <laughs> uh, somebody clip that, somebody clip that. Somebody clip that. Well, uh, I just think it's really nice you picked me to hang out with, uh, and, um... Just gonna give you my last remaining family heirloom, because you were nice to me a couple times. I'm- th we met this dude, like, 48 hours ago, by the way. Wraith gives it to you. The bell. He gives you the bell. Get your mind out of the gutter. Jeez. I want you to have it. Please take care of it. You know how much it means to me. I promise, I'll take such good care of it. This is the sweetest gift. Wraith smiles, but even when smiling, his eyes seem sad. You smile back, knowing what a gift he's just given you. I mean, it's kind of shitty because you can't really do anything with it, but it means a lot. Not to you, though. To someone else. Still, cool gift. You both search for something to say, anything to talk about. During the awkward silence, you look, you look around the dump, spotting some kind of ritual table stained with blood and littered with various bottles. Nearby is what looks like some dangerous potions. What was this ancient cult up to? Looks like water. Looking to shake up this date? Is this a date? Yikes. Anyways, looking to shade it up, you approach the potions and pick up the fanciest one. So what will we do next? I feel like pouring out these potions might be a bit dangerous. Mixing these potions could kill one of us, which would be a bit annoying. What can I say? I, I've, I've never been stopped from drinking mysterious liquids before. Freedom lives in being bold. You take the biggest bottle of the nastiest looking potion and gulp it down. It turns out, that was not a great idea. Or was it the best idea? That's right, it's me again. While I've got your attention, let me simply remind you. You've got a mission, a purpose, a destiny. Maintain control. If you lose it, take it back. Okay, now back to business. Oh, you're alive. Welcome back. Wraith is tenderly caring for you, wiping your brow with a wet cloth. He's undressed you. Now, now, don't get carried away. He's had his eyes closed the whole time. I was watching. And made a bed for you. Thank you for taking care of me. I'm sorry I did that. I don't know what came over me. I'm just happy you're okay. I want to take care of the people I, uh, care for. You smile at him. Deep down, you can tell he's also happy he had a chance for me to be there for someone in a time of need. We're, it's, it, it appears that we're making some of the right decisions. At least a few of them. At least a few. Oh my god, what? Mm. Wraith nervously smiles. He's endearingly awkward. So uh, I guess, um, tell me about your family. I remember my grandmother. I remember my parents. I have no family. Um, 
I mean, really, I have no family, canonically, in Quite Lord. Like, that's just how it is. Just kind of started existing one day, didn't I? So I gotta figure out how I want to put this. You know? Every now and then, a normal person enters this chat and gets really confused as to what's going on. Okay, let's, let's get one thing clear. If you end up in a Quite Stream, you're not a normal person. You might be relatively normal, but you don't end up here because you're a well-adjusted individual. At all. <laughs> I have no family. Time to be a buzzkill. I have no family, or at least none that I can remember. Family is all we have. It's our only real connection to this life. It's where we came from and what we leave behind. It's sad that you don't remember yours. Maybe we're all just broken. I made him cry. The Wraith frowns and looks away. Well, that got you nowhere. Well, time to, time to give it up. Time to do it again. God, I love the fast forward option. It's so useful. Look at him just like go through every stage of grief. You're a legend, bro? Thanks. Motherfucker, pick your options and stick by them? No! I'm not fucking doing that. I've been rejected so many times, I physically can't handle this anymore. Haven't I been through enough, Jacqueline? Haven't I been through enough goddamn heartbreak? Why can't I just have one good thing in my life? Why can't I just be happy, huh? I remember my grandmother. Not much, but she had this certain smell that always made me feel safe. Is it possible for inkly blackness to sparkle? It happens in Wraith's eyes. I remember my grandmother too, how she kept me safe. The wrinkles in her hand as she held on to me for dear life. How she soothed me during Wraith's eyes water as he trails off. Grandmothers are the best of us. I'm glad we share that bond. The sexual tension in the air is palpable. The off of discussion about grandma is incredible. Or maybe it's just regular tension. Hard to tell with this guy. You look around for anything to distract you. What's this table for? I feel like this is a conversation starter. You look at the ritual table again. It's beaten up with a giant hole in it. You look back at Wraith. Smile. You smile at Wraith. Know any rituals we could do on this table? You wink. Nice touch. Wraith blushes and stammers and looks away, smiling. Nice. Winky face. Ha! <laughs> Yes, narrators can narrate using emojis. That was an emoticon, actually. There's like a difference. Emoticons are typed. Emojis are images. Wraith looks intently at the table. What's he thinking about? Probably something deep and philosophical. Intense sad. Something about the inherent nothingness. Wanna play cornhole? Ha! Ah! Or that. Is that a new window? The hole in the table makes a great target. Here, we can use these skulls I found laying around. Well, this is definitely a more fun date activity. Ooh, listen, game devs. I found a typo. I found a typo in your game. One out of ten found a typo. Really embarrassing for you guys. <laughs> oh, you should be so embarrassed by this. It's easy. Just stand back and, you know, toss them in the hole. Don't worry if you miss. There are lots more skulls here. Toss that little skull. Okay, okay, okay. Did I do- not dad? Oh my god, I'm literally crushing it. Oh my god, that was the most perfect one I've ever gotten. Ah, oh, fuck. Could have been worse. Don't worry, nobody wins everything, all the time. Winning any time is actually pretty cool. I played this hundreds of times and never gotten them all. I'm just glad to have someone else to play with. You feel like you're finally warming up, right? So you unleash the big guns. Um, you want to play truth or dare? God damn it. Wraith looks mortified, but tries to keep it together. Maybe this is progress. Um, I guess so, but only if I can ask first. Deal. Truth or dare? Fuck. Do I do I do I want to take a dare from him or a truth? I, I feel like questions have gotten us nowhere but embarrassing situations. I feel like the dare is better. Dare. I'll take a dare. Why not? Um, I might dare you to tell me if you were a plant what kind of plant you would be. Hmm, great question. I think I should be encouraging. Oh fuck, do I wanna do I wanna insist on a dare? Do I wanna insist on a dare? Or do I wanna do I wanna be encouraging? Be 
a succulent? You guys have like no creativity. Uh, if I was a plant, I would be a succulent. Yeah, you and every fucking other, like 20 year old American. Hmm, great question. Great smiles. You're such a kiss ass. Cactus? Rhododendron? What the fuck is that? Rhododendron. Oh, these are very pretty, actually. Look at these. These are very pretty. These are very pretty. I don't hate this answer. A rhododendron. Those colorful, beautiful blossoms bring me joy. They make me explode with energy and feel alive inside. A very flowery description. It's a little fruity. I thought it was funny. I don't think Wraith cared for it, though. Too bad you can't woo me. You can't. Um, okay. Dare. Take off your shirt. Show me some- He's ba he's practically not wearing it. He's practically not wearing it. What, what would, um... Show me something gives him more agency. I think show me something gives him more agency, and I would like- I would like to respect his boundaries. Show me something. Show me something you'd never show anyone else. Wait, you're about to see something many other people have seen. Wraith looking incredibly uncomfortable. I'm sorry, that's a bad dare. Too vague. It's just truth or dare makes me feel... I'm just... Thank you for being patient with me. I need to try to be more open with people, starting now. Wraith clears his throat. In that way, a lazy writer would make him do if they wanted to signify something important and different was coming up. Let's see if we're right. You have my bell. I want to show you something. We were right. Take a drink. Is this not a drinking dream? Damn, missed opportunity. Of course I have it. Well, I can't finish this Heineken if you really want me to, narrator. It's, it, yeah, it's gone. No. You reach for it, but it's gone. Um, Wraith furrows his brow. I, when the fuck did I lose it? No, 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 no. I refuse to let it end like this. I refuse. I will, I will, I will rewrite history. I'm using the time stone. I'm literally Doctor Strange. Look at me go. Speed running. Drink. Just took some swifty things. Grandmother. Now time can be whatever I want. Now is no time at all. Corn cornhole moment. Okay, I got I got the funny game again. Nice. 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 Okay, okay, okay. I'll I'll, I'll do it right this time. Uh, Rhododendron. Take off your shirt. I dare you to take off your shirt. Stop me if you've heard this one before, but... Well, I didn't want to take it off the pool. Why would I now? Because I'm adorable? Wraith looks at you inscrutably like the computer chip running him shut off. Is he about to kill you? And then another sigh, but this time he follows it up with a smile. Yes! Oh, all right. Oh my god! Oh my god! Incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, Wraith takes off his shirt. Oh, wow. Feels like a big moment, like you won the game or something. But no, you got a lot more game left. Sorry. You applaud him as he blushes. He quickly puts his shirt back on and smiles, reinvigorated. Wraith clears his throat. In that way, a lazy writer would make him do if they wanted to. Okay, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck, no! It's just gone canonically forever? That's fucked up. Wraith furrows his brow. I swear I had it. I don't know what could happen. We'll need to find it for it. But Claudette and Dwight burst in and interrupt. Seems like they have a very dramatic announcement. Thanks for the sub, sweet flowers. See, told you so. But it needs to take place at the beach. You arrive at the beach, but something feels off. You can't quite put your finger on it, but you feel uneasy and cold. And here's why. Spirit appears as if from nowhere. Hey, quite. Didn't you expect this hot piece of sass? What, goth girlfriends can't make silly, sexy puns from time to time? Dwight and Claudette scram. Yeah, I use these two simpletons to dupe you. You're easy to dupe. Maybe because deep down, you wanted to be duped. There's no way Wraith can be making, keep be making you happy. 
Spirit's usual disaffected nature has given way to some combination of disgusted and desperation. Guys, things are really heating up. I'm the prize, and they're fighting over me. So true. And in order to uh, adequately deal with the situation, I think I need to run a meditative ad break to think over my strategy. Good grief. She stole the bell, didn't she? She might have. Actually, yeah. Good shot. Ugh. Heineken. Heineken moment. If she stole the bell, she's a bitch. And it's kind of working. R Wraith's a fake. He's not even a real ghost. He only pretends he doesn't want people to care about him, but really, that's all he wants, and he wants it more than anything. Yeah, I know. That's, like, the point. I'm trying to get him to be, like, more, uh, you know, assertive. And to stand up for himself. Uh, can you imagine wanting something so cringe? I bet he won't even tell you his theory about this island. What a fake. You deserve to be someone re with someone real. A real ghost. Someone who really doesn't give a shit. Someone who doesn't even care if you say yes or no to me. You're right about Wraith, you're a hypocrite. Don't even answer. What if I just did like the Call of Duty silent protagonist meme? I like Spirit, but she's an ass. She might only be an ass in this storyline. I feel like the character dynamics change, depending on like who you're trying to romance. She unironically said cringe. I unironically say cringe, what do you mean? You see through her desperate last minute attempt to win your affection. It's almost sad. You turn around and walk back to Wraith without so much as saying a word. You came back. No one ever comes back. Wraith is shook. Are those tears welling up in his eyes? You can't tell because he looks away. There's a sniffle and he looks back at you, beaming. I want to show you something. You follow Wraith to a corner of the ruins that you haven't seen. He brushes aside some dead leaves and branches, revealing a hatch in the ground. Want to do the honors? You open the hatch with some effort and lower yourself into a long tunnel, grabbing onto a rusty ladder and beginning your descent. Be careful. You descend into a... Holy fuck, this bachelor pad is crazy. You descend into a spooky, dimly lit room. It looks like an ancient ritual chamber with torches, tapestries, and grave skulls and animal remains. On one end is a set of intricately carved locks and cuff mechanisms on the wall. A torture area? On the other side is a table with potions, books, and maps. Damn, he a freak. Is this the part where he murders me? The fucking bomb goes like as you scroll over that shit. Still, it, like always makes me laugh, man. Dinner and torture? Say less. I, I want to go on like a waterboarding date. Like between bites of flame and yawn. Like you get like a towel like forcefully shoved over your head and just like a pitcher of the water dumped over. And like they do that between every course. 
Like before they bring the creme brulee or cheesecake out. The Happy Room. Look at the book. You pick up one of the larger leather-bound books and Wraith walks over, opening to a specific page. You see incantations, symbols, a drawing of someone changed the, to the wall. A different language you can't read, except for the words, Cult of the Black Veil. Conveniently, those words are in exactly the language you can read. From everything I found, I think these are the ruins of an ancient cult. They seem to be devoted to some type of ancient evil. I think they used this island, or maybe the person they worshipped did. And I think they used this ritual site to travel to and from the island. I think they sacrificed people on this torture wall in order to o open some portal out here. Look at the wall. You walk over to the wall and examine the chains and locks. It looks like some kind of torture wall. Wow, what happened to people here? Did they keep prisoners? It looks like they were tortured from what I've been able to dig up. It was something more ritualistic, serving a larger purpose. I have a reason to believe those prisoners weren't alive for long. You unfurl one of the larger rolled up pieces of canvas, revealing a detailed map of the island. It's all here. Trapper's Cave, Spirit's Lighthouse, Huntress's Cabin, all the common areas, even IP Island up in the corner with a little heart drawn around it. I figured out the layout of the entire island. I need to know what it is I'm trying to escape from. Do you think the cult of the Black Veil is still around? Are we in danger? I don't know, maybe, but I have a plan. All we need... And right as you finally are about to get some of that sweet, sweet information you've been lusting after, Claudette and Dwight pop in like a bunch of fucking buzzkills. This time, they swear it's a good reason. I promise, we're not being manipulated this time. Honest. It's time for dinner, you silly gooses. Come get some food. Dwight, for the last time, the plural of goose is geese. Sorry, I keep forgetting. I hate them so much. What a fun day you've been having. I can see it written all over your face. You're shining, and that's not just the remaining anxious sweat from spending an afternoon courting a psycho killer. No, no, you really are feeling this whole romantic experience. Don't worry, I'll keep your dirty little secrets. But enough gentle ribbing, it's time to get back to business. All the <clears throat> appetizing singles have arrived for dinner, including Trickster. Wraith is here too. We're not gonna do the gag where we cram them all on screen at the same time, so just believe me. They're all there, and they're just as sexy and demented as you remember them. With your love on the line, everyone is being careful not to offend you by saying the wrong thing. Congrats, by the way, on getting this far. I'm as surprised as you are that these four are falling for you. No, not because of your personality, but because you just met them yesterday. However, since Spirit seems like the biggest long shot to end up holding onto your hand, she throws caution to the wind and speaks up. It's a pretty small consolation prize for being the least loved killer on Murderer's Island, but hey, letting them have this one moment in the spotlight is the least we can do, and heaven knows they won't do any better than that. Clearly, I need to do a little bit more to be part of this group, or I'll be alone forever. However, I didn't eat, and I like being alone, so I take all that back. I don't care what the group has for dinner, as long as we start with the shrimp cocktail. I saw a movie once where these ghosts turned shrimp cocktail into haunt haunted synchronized dance, and I'm still working out how they did it. You mean beetle? Quite. Stop them from saying it. Beetle shrimp? The most rare and delicious type of shrimp? Beetle shrimp? Is that some new species? Because I've hunted many beetle and many shrimp, and I've never heard of beetle shrimp. Of course you haven't. Like Spirit says, they've got hypnotic power. Anyone who sees them soon forgets. Also, something to do with dancing? I wasn't going to say anything that, though. No, I was going to say... Hachu. Excuse you, Quite. Now you were saying, Trapper? You've done all you can. I appreciate it. I'm gonna have to narrate us out of this somehow. Hold on. Are you afraid we might accidentally recite some spell and conjure a ghost? Because I hate to break it to you, but it's a bit late for that. She's so fine. They're all, like, fine as hell. But Wraith has my heart, is the difference. And then a giant osprey swooped down and dropped a severed head on the table, distracting everyone. Trapper... Hey, I've never seen this particular severed head before. What? This time I'm being honest. Sorry, not my finest work, but something had to be done. We've got to be careful about which cultural references we get mixed up with is all. Dinner will be sever served shortly, but certain power brokers would like to know about your day. Would you like to share your day with the rest of the group? You've had an interesting day for sure, but how will you describe it to the others? Say too much or too little and it could affect your standing with the group. Okay, but don't sit at there saying nothing. Nothing is not an option. Get excited about the hatch. I don't like Wraith shared that with me in confidence. And I'm not gonna show I'm not gonna spoil that. I had a great time. It was a blast. We had a great time and played cornhole. I won't tell you who won, but we both did, in a way. Everyone rolls their eyes. Talk about sexy. No, really. If you're gonna tell us a story, talk about something sexy instead of whatever that was. Wraith smiles. You're strangely good at getting him to do that. And Dwight and Claudette bring out dinner. Everyone eats in silence. No one trusts anyone now, and they are all very tired. 
Oh wait, nope, sorry, that's a dreary supernatural horror thriller set in Antarctica. Not a charming parody dating sim set in an undisclosed tropical paradise. Ah. Bony appetite. Don't you mean bone? No, almost everything we serve has lots of bones in it. Even the vegetables. Impossible to avoid on this island. Everyone eats without speaking. Tensions are rising, both of the sexual and deadly variety. I, th th those seem like they could be at odds with each other, just a, a tiny bit. The thing reference? Yes. When everyone finishes, Dwight and Claudette come back to clean up the table. They linger around you as they pick up your plate, take your napkin, and dust crumbs off the table. What would you like to say to the servants? I would like to ignore them for ruining my fucking day. Being buzz kills twice in a row. Sounds like two sides of the same coin. Ugh, don't make me thank the bus driver, man. This ain't Fortnite. I'm so pissed at these fuckers. Plus, if I'm being honest, they probably want some ignorance. They, they, they don't want to deal with us. Is there anything else we can do for you? Anything at all? Anything? A manners book, perhaps? It's fine, we're used to this kind of shabby treatment here on Jerk Island. Everyone, if you would be so kind as to follow us to the fire pit, we greatly appreciate it. We've been told something big is going to happen. Something that will change everything. You can go willingly, or you can go unwillingly. You have no choice, Tough Cookies. Did you have a choice on how you said that, Dweeb? Yes, and I immediately regret how I did. Good, something needs to change around here. Fire is rebirth. Fire illuminates the soul. I hope the fire isn't too smoky. Smoke hurts my eyes. I have pretty sensitive eyes. I also am terribly afraid of it. The fire, I mean, not my eyes. Because of childhood trauma involving fire. And finally, everyone starts moving towards the fire pit. If only to get away from Wraith's complaining. You take a seat on a comfortable log, feeling the fire's heat against your skin, and wait for other pillars to take their place, wondering who will want to tell a story this time. Will narrator tell a story? I bet they've got a stunningly creative mind. Hey, you think? Are they allowed to simply place thoughts in my mind like this? Doesn't seem fair. Everyone makes their way in, but something unexpected happens. Nothing. Nothing happens. Something almost always seems to be happening here, so nothing is probably not a great sign. Oh cool, and now everybody is looking at you. So you know, do something. Should I pick sell someone to tell a story, or should we play charades? Boggle? Um, well, we were actually thinking, why don't you tell us a story? Wraith points his spine and skull staff thingamajig at you. You duck out of its way, who knows what that thing can do? Probably shoot lasers. Try not to bore us. We're just very interested in you. Don't speak for me, Huntress. Now, you can't tell if you're warm from the fire, or if it's your nerves heating up. I know that fire is right here, but maybe if we stop talking about it all the time, we can start to pretend it's not here and doesn't, you know, threaten to burn us all alive. He's not supposed to hear me. Get out of here, Wraith. Quite was about to make an important decision about telling a story or not. Fine, I'll tell a story. I'm not the storytelling type. Well, Wraith was the one who asked. So, you know, I got, I got, I got to do it for him. You know, I got to do it for him. He was so nice about it, too. Fine, I'll tell a story. Sure, I'm game to tell a story. I hope it's a mystery. Uh, okay, so what type of story do you want to tell? Romance, adventure, action? Hmm. Aren't adventure and action, like, similar? Like, I was hoping for, like, tragedy, something sad. Romance? Hmm. Action, story time? Something, something soft. Get the sexual tension up. Okay, I, I think, I think, no trauma dumping? God damn it, man! No tragic backstory. I, fucking Wraith is allowed to d give his tragic backstory, but apparently it's off limits when I want to do it. Double standards, I'm telling you. Fine, let's romp comment. I'll tell a romantic story. About two lovers who take poison together and die foaming at the mouth? Or about two strong hunters who meet when they both try to bludgeon the same wily wolverine? Not quite. It's about my parents. They met at a party in college. He was hosting. She had been dragged there by some friends. They couldn't have been more different, and yet, as the night went on, they were drawn to each other. She made fun of his taste in music, and he took an interest in her major, women's studies. They were married within two months. Bit soon to know if you can trust someone, don't you think? It's so sweet! Yes! It worked! It fucking worked! Exactly. I learned a lot about love from them. 
If you know, you know. Some people don't need years to get acquainted with their partner. Love could spark from a mere look around a campfire. Now you've got their attention. Each killer is furiously attempting to catch your eye from across the fire pit. Except for Trickster, who has wandered over to the bar and is loudly playing his own music to drown you out. Okay, that was not a very good story. I don't mean to insult you, but it was actually quite bad. Sorry, but the narrator keeps it real. We can't just end there. So who else would you like to hear a story from tonight? You look from killer to killer, trying to decide who might be the most entertaining. Hmm. Do I want to put Wraith on the spot again? I feel like I should be learning more about him, right? Like, the whole deal is I should be, like, getting to know my prospective lover. Just misclicked and this is what shows up. Welcome. Welcome, Miss Clicker. You, you, like, your fate could not have been meaner to you by dropping you in this stream and nowhere else. This is, like, you're gonna have a fucking awful time here. Guys, I'm not fucking, I'm not, if you're saying spirit, because you want me to fuck spirit, I'm not fucking spirit. We have already, we have set, dead set on Wraith. I only care to make decisions if it helps me get closer to him. Okay? That's the only thing I care about. So this says most entertaining. And I don't want to make light of his past. Play favorites, go the poly route. I don't think that, I don't think that works. I think we got to pick Wraith. Well, um, I guess if you want, let's see what story could I tell. I could tell you about, uh, I hope I say this right, Mamiwata, a beautiful African sea goddess who would lure men in with sex and then reveal her true form as half woman, half fish, making them swear to be true to her and no one else. Long story short, it usually ended badly for the men, which is the end of that story, I guess. My bad. Um, let me see. There was this one about the mysterious cult that would demand a human sacrifice to, um, no, that's no good. You don't want to hear that one. There's the living tree. Its branches were more like tentacles, and it oozed a strange liquid from the bark. One time, I, a girl I knew drank the liquid. She disappeared that night, but a week later, a new tree appeared. It had a very similar-looking face etched into the bark. No, that's a bad story. That could never happen. Hmm, what about something truly horrifying? One time, I was doing my maths, and I mixed up the quadratic equation in the Pythagorean theorem. Just for a second, in my mind, I guess I was tired, but wow, that was really scary. I want to hear more about the half-fish lady, particularly the fish part. It's not just you, quite. Half the time, I have no idea what the hell a trapper is talking about. Either when you're either when you're hot and rich and extremely scary, you start to think people will just accept whatever you say. How is story time? A lot of people like to take pot shots at sequels, but I think every good story deserves a follow-up. When you think it's the end, the sequel is almost never as rewarding as the original. That's why I'm more, much more of a fan of the episodic style of storytelling. Oh no. Don't tell me it's just get a fucking cliffhanger here. Knowing it's a series takes a lot of pressure off any individual installment and builds a greater sense of community between audience and creator. Tell me quite, if you could delete any sequel from existence, what would it be? Don't answer that, we don't actually care. We're just here to make sure that we seamlessly move on to the next segment of the evening. God forbid my small talk get in the way of a romantic twilight moment. Thanks for the sub, not for everyone. Dwight, I'm gonna need you to shut your mouth. You know that we need to get back to that thing we do whenever we're not on stream. Okay, okay, you have fun tonight, and try not to wink wink and end up dead. Why did you say the words wink wink out loud, and what kind of double entendre are you getting at with the end up dead thing? Dwight is physically incapable of winking. Not one, not since the accident. And do you know that all of these people are despicable criminals with double digit kill counts, right? Well, except for Spirit, she doesn't really belong here. She's strictly a victim, not a perpetrator. No wonder she's pissed. Did I hear somebody trash talking Spirit? Deal me in. What do you say we take this talk to the hot tub so I can soak this bod while I roast the ghost with some killer hot takes? Please, enough of talk of burns, things that are lit or are getting blazed. It's enough that these activities have been set next to a literal fire. Must they be surrounded by figurative flames as well? What if we turned and ran as far away from this place as we could, just you and me? On those spindly legs, you're probably tired before you got too far. If it's running away to some place more secluded quite as after, you should obviously join me. Have you seen these legs? Pure power. That is a compelling argument. Like, have you seen them? Jeez. Not that my walk speed reflects my giant stature, but that's because I choose to move slowly for stealthy reasons. It's my own choice, and it's completely logical. Why is everyone so obsessed with comparing themselves to each other and creating drama? I'm so over all that. Don't you get it? Society wants you to trick you into fighting with each other so that corporations can swoop in and sell you fake solutions to all your fabricated problems. 
I'll be sitting in the shade and drinking something locally sourced while thumbing through a public domain novella printed on recycled paper before because I refuse to play their game. It's like she's actively trying to be as unappealing as possible. Does it really turn anyone else on or just me? Okay, you, you guys can do your thing. Despite Trapper's insatiable appetite, it seems his attention, along with the attention of everyone else, is still on you for the moment. If you could, I don't know, just pick one of us, maybe we could all move on with our lives, or, um, you know, some special projects we might have going. You heard him. Who will it be? Who will you head off with for an evening activity? I, I'm, I'm just saying, you may not get a ton of chances to date around like this before your time on Burglar's Island comes to a close. And no, I'm not satisfied with that name either, but with this streaming reality TV dating show boom happening, it's pretty much all that wasn't taken. Which killer would you pick? And yes, we're back to excluding Trickster because, ugh, that guy. Do we stay loyal? I, I think we stay, I think we stay loyal. Like, come on now, we, we, we've really, we've really invested deep. We have invested deeply in this. I, I feel I feel like it would be wrong to not go off go off of him. Wraith? I knew you'd never pick me. Who am I kidding? But I did pick you. <laughs> Wraith immediately turns and run away. It's not like he didn't tell you what you were getting into. Well, follow him. Huh? It's a TV show? I guess. You catch up to Wraith and, as usual, he appears a little anxious. Give Wraith a massage, ask what's wrong. Let's be forward. You stop and stop behind Wraith, placing your hands between his shoulder and neck before he realizes what's happening. Surprise massage. Wrath tenses up at your touch, but then relaxes. Oh, that's the spot. The normally inhibited Wraith lets out a moan before returning the favor, and before you know it, all the stress has melted from your body. Boy, oh, stop playing, put your hands on my body. Hey, this was supposed to be about you, mister. Oh no, I didn't mean, I just was, I wanted to, there's that big sigh again. Sorry, sometimes I get two in my head. You nod understandingly. Well, maybe there's some way we can get you out of there. Suggest so throwing a frisbee? So just getting down and dirty in the sand? <laughs> Pure sexual tension. Down and dirty is going to be very literal. Like, we're literally just going to roll around, and that's it. You know what you got to do. Yeah, and, and if it doesn't work out, I can always, like, turn back time to the good old days. Hmm, we're on a beach. Maybe we should get down and dirty in the sand. It would be a shame to let it all go to waste. And just to make sure there's no confusion about your intentions, you wink. That will work. There's no way Wraith will misinterpret this. That's a great idea. But maybe we can both be clean if I go grab Dite and get him dirty instead. As Wraith runs off to kidnap Dwight for some nefarious purpose, the narrator looks at you and smirks. Yes, the narrator is so smug about reading right, they are now talking in the third person. Alright, I got it, you're right. Thank you. Wraith returns with an exhausted looking Dwight and some shovels, and you realize you will now be burying Dwight in the sand and making a sand sculpture around his head. Look, I know what this isn't what you had in mind, but it still seems kind of fun. This is almost as good as sex. Okay, what sand sculpture do you want to build? Oh, fuck. I, I... I don't want to- I don't want to push him, man. I don't want to- Clearly he didn't think that's what we were getting into. And now Dwight and Claudette are already here. I feel- I feel like we should just build the car. I feel like- Wait, no, the mermaid! The mermaid! Let's make Dwight a mermaid. Yes, just like the ma Mama Wata. That's what I- that's what I was thinking! It's just like the story. You dig a hole, the size of a person. This truly is a dead by daylight experience, isn't it? Once it's big enough, an unenthused Dwight gets in and you pile sand on top of him to his neck. You put the finishing touches on Mer Dwight. Wraith takes out a Polaroid camera and takes a pic of the three of you. He's all smiles. Dwight looks miserable. Wow, that really relaxed me. Thank you. Oh wow, it's so late. Time flies when you're on a date with the coolest person on the island. Oh, this is a date? Wraith smiles and rolls his eyes. Come on, let's get back to the group. As you start to leave, you hear Dwight whimper. A uh, high tide is gonna come in. I'm gonna drown. Leave Dwight to his fate. Help Dwight. Call for Wraith's help. For dating purposes, I feel like I should leave Dwight to his fate. I think I should just leave him. I think it would be funnier if we left him. You turn and catch up with Wraith. You're trying to impress a killer, after all. Dwight's screams gradually fade into the background as you walk arm in arm with Wraith. What a beautiful night. Wraith turns to you, smiling sheepishly. Wow, this day went by so fast, but guess it's over. 
I don't understand. Why is it, you strange, beautiful weirdo? The gang's all together again in the volleyball court. Seems like only yesterday you were sitting on the sidelines watching everyone get sweaty. That's because it was? Boy, feels like I've been here a lot longer than that, actually. It's so late that the sun is already beginning to rise. Better get this over with quickly so that I, I mean, you can get some beauty rest. <coughs> Sorry. I do not recommend the eternal damnation of perpetual narrative. Good thing you already used your time well since then. People really getting to know the gang, the brain, the mogul, the basket case, the, the psychotic bunny girl. You know, the four types of people. The four genders. Anyways, everyone is close on the gathered for the volleyball court for a new type of game. Pitch your dream date and see who quite chooses. Who's ready for a round robin? How round are we talking? No, not to eat, Huntress. Each killer gets two minutes to tell you all about the dream date they have planned for you tomorrow. In no particular order, which is a weird thing to mention, almost like the order does matter. Spirit, why don't you go first? Get this over with and then you can go back to reading your book. Stop talking. Hit us, Spirit. Figuratively. You gotta watch your words with these people. Tomorrow, you'll spit in the face of God, die, and be reborn anew. That's it? If you're not intrigued by that, I don't want you. Go draw crayon art with Trapper or dig up whatever mysteries with Wraith. I don't know what those guys do all day. Do you want to at least specify which god you'll be spitting in the face of? All of them. Okay then, so hydrate tonight if you intend to hang with Spirit. Great, Huntress, why don't you take it from here? Tomorrow morning, I'm planning on a nice atmospheric breakfast on the yacht. Don't worry, Trapper won't even know it's gone. What was that? Nothing. Go away. Then boy oh boy, I've got such an adventure planned, it involves hunting for treasure. What kind of treasure are we looking for? Guess you'll have to pick me to find out. Let me tell you, it's primo stuff. Now if you don't mind, I've got to start preparing, because it's clear that you're going to pick me. I'm, I'm literally not, I'm sorry. Confident, mysterious, I like it. Just farted. Trapper, without further ado, would you like to make us all uncomfortable by pushing the boundaries of what's acceptable not only in polite society, but within the world of the but within the narrative of this in-world event, and also the larger meta-narrative of a dead by daylight dating experience? Sometimes you just gotta say it. Why well, yes, thank you, I'd love to. So quite, you're thinking of picking me? Well, this is your final warning. Pick me and be punished. And rewarded? Tomorrow will suck, probably. I'm not an easy guy to get along with. I know that. But I can tell you this much. I'm hiding a secret on this island that will make fans shit themselves with excitement. If you like Trapper, you're gonna love it. And if not, you're a maggot. That's that's da that's da that's a dangerous word, man. Also, everyone, even confident, sexy, just farted, even sexy ladies in rabbit masks, better stay the hell away from my yacht. Sorry, anyways. Wraith? Well, uh, I don't know. I'd really prefer to just tell Quite privately. Um, I don't really know how that's going to work with these game mechanics. What if you just whispered it to Quite? Wraith considers this for a long moment. Too long. That's fine. Without moving, Wraith lowers his voice to a barely audible whisper. Tomorrow we have to find my bell, and then I can finally tell you what I've been working on. It's going to be really special. The kind of thing we will really bond. And maybe finally get off this island? And maybe then we can go on a real date? Oh shit. Uh, you done? Is that it? Wraith nods, proud. And time's up, everyone. Gosh, you'll need to dream about these options, so you're ready to choose in the morning. Now go dream about all these swoon-worthy options so that you're ready to make a choice come dawn. Have a swell night. Um, did you two forget to mention something? Haha, <laughs> oh gosh, how we could forget. Before you run off to slumber peacefully, there's one more thing to do. No reality survival dating competition parody would be complete without singing at one of our contestants who is already teetering on the edge of a psychological break. And giving them a little push. Hold up, this has been a survival dating competition parody this entire time, and I'm just now finding out? What? Come on, the signs were there. You just didn't read them. Welcome to Murderer's Island. It's now time to eliminate one of the killers. Oof, it's like a butchering, but it hurts even worse. You can't kill a killer, but can you break their heart? Do you dare to even try? You mean... That's right. Tomorrow, these sexy slicers will not be eligible to take you on a date. Who's it gonna be? But why? Uh, because it's dramatic? Because it's surprising? Because it's a classic reversal of fate? And it will hurt someone's feelings. Someone dangerous. What's it gonna be, champ? What's your thought process here? Trapper seems like he might throttle you in your sleep if you eliminate him. That being said, at least you'd see him coming. Spirit could be anywhere. She floats, and I hear she can disappear. Hard to track. If you get rid of Wraith, you might cry. And although I totally support normalizing men crying and being vulnerable, it just seems like he might be an ugly crier. Huntress? She might pretend to be okay with it, but then you'll start seeing her behind every tree. What I'm trying to say is, I don't envy you, boss, so which sociopath are you eliminating? I like Trapper the least. 
Unfortunately, like, I, I just don't like him. I like him the least. Spirit has been the most actively vitriolic. But as they said, she's the one who belongs here the least. She's like straight up a victim. All these other folks are legit murderers. Spirit, Spirit's just here on like technicality, all right? Spirit is a pick me and vengeful. Yeah, worse than being a murderer, huh? They will come after you. My thing is, I think I could take Trapper. I, w I would simply outbox him. I would do a little Jake Paul on the Tyrone Woodley and like fucking bah! get him over the head. You like Trap? I'm getting rid of Trapper, sorry. This was very simple. Trapper, you scared the living shit out of me. You were eliminated. That's fair. Honestly, though, I don't care. You suck. But not in a good way. You bore me, you personality-free maggot. It wouldn't even be fun to kill you. Which I was go totally going to do tomorrow the first chance I got. So really, this is a win-win for both of us. Still might kill you, though, out of principle for eliminating me. Sleep with both, eye both eyes open. And have fun on your day tomorrow. Now that you've broken the heart of someone heartless, you should go get some shut-eye. And don't worry too much about the broken heart you left behind. Thanks for the sub, Demon Duo Gamers. Because of course, they'll be receiving a consolation prize. They might not get to go home with quite when this is all over, but they'll never sleep alone again. That's right, we're sending our eliminated player home with... <laughs> their own mostly new Trickster body pillow. The next best thing to the real Trickster. It might not hug you back, but it certainly won't try and stab you. And how do we know? Because I've tried it. That's right, it's Dwight tested, Claudette approved. I hope you sleep well tonight, Quite. You're my hero for what you've accomplished. How can you sleep tonight knowing what you've done? No, not because of the guilt. I mean knowing that there's a legit homicidal maniac who hates you so close by. How can you sleep tonight knowing what you'll do tomorrow? I don't know how you'll do it, but you better go before Cl Dwight and Claudette come back and push you to sleep themselves. You know those two. Schedule, schedule, schedule. Wow, what a crazy way to end the day. An elimination? I didn't know it was that kind of game. Let's check in with everyone, especially with our loser. Everyone deserves a send-off. We'll see how things go tomorrow. I suppose I'm not expecting anything. I tend to shut my mind off during hard times. I know I seem all excited and devil may care, but the truth is I'm really a pessimist at heart. That tends to happen when your mother is skewered by an elk when you were young. Yeah, how'd you know? Wild guest, it's also the only thing you talk about. If you'll excuse me, I think I saw a raccoon over that tree, and I'm feeling peckish. I don't remember the last time I felt this nervous, excited. Chemically, those two feelings are very similar, but, uh, I don't know. Quite's really great. What else do you want me to say? Oh, no. I don't handle rejection well. At least I don't think I do. No one has ever been dumb enough to reject me before. Yeah, the more I think about it, the angrier I'm getting, and I'm a giant rage monster, so everyone in this room should be scared right now. Turn the camera off. Did I think there was a chance I might get eliminated? Yeah, I did. Did I care if I got eliminated? Not even a little. Does the volume of words I spend talking about how much I don't care about things signify a deeper yearning within me to be seen, heard, and validated by those around me? Nah. What? No, you're not a part of this. You don't get a confession. It's cool, man. I'm not a part of anything. You feel me? I'm not a cog in anyone's machine. I'm my own machine. The whole thing is pretty cute, though. Charmingly low-budget, old-school marketing vibes. That he said NGL out loud. Not gonna lie, kinda wish I wasn't so busy right now. I'd definitely be down with the reality show style dating competition with survival elements. But I got my new album, upcoming tour, finalizing the new sneaker line, producing a limited series on my life, starting a new social media NFT crypto app, and doing these private gigs over on IP Island? No amount of abs is fucking saving you from that embarrassment. My dudes, you gotta come check it out. IP Island, it's dope. It's where the real killers are hanging out. Fully licensed, no legal drama. Lawyers take a hike. That's where all the fucking licensed characters in Dead by Daylight are hanging out. <laughs> fucking pyramid head from Silent Hill. That spring trap's even out there right now. I'm gonna tell everyone said that what Trickster said about them. Don't worry. I'm talking your favorite established characters from all over pop culture that can't be seen on this island. Hell, you probably can't even mention them, like Ghostface. Don't you say it! Look, we get it, you're very popular and in demand, but we have a game to get back to, and I don't want to get sued. Ghostface. <laughs> Come on! Whatever, I don't even care. I'm the trickster. See you around, quite. You too, narrator. Um, I have a name you know. You do? Just farted. Yes, yeah, seriously, they do not pay me enough to deal with you people. Is it my turn? What? No, no, it is not your turn. You're sentient water. How are you even sitting in that chair? What's a chair? 
It's the thing you're getting all wet. Now it's gonna smell like mildew. Okay, rude. Thanks for the sub, Kerm. Fine, let's just get this over with. It's your turn, Ocean. Do your check-in. Check-in? I was just looking for the bathroom. Bathroom? Are you serious? It's down to the hall to the left. You could just fucking pee in yourself. You're the ocean. Plenty of people have done it before. It's okay. Never mind. Never mind? What does that mean? No, not you too. This wasn't meant to be a confessional time for literally every character in the game. It's okay. We don't have to confess anything. We've just been working our asses off for two days straight and wanted to sit down somewhere. This chair is wet. Yeah, I think the ocean just peed on it. How is that pop? You know what? I don't care. You two are looking pretty pleased with yourselves. I've got something to confess. Oh, great. What's it gonna be? You ate glue in the second grade? You cheated on an algebra test once? Watching Trapper get eliminated was the first time in this unending spiral of staircase of pain that my life that I felt even a modicum of joy. Every minute that I'm alive is a nightmare. This place, this sun, the sweet sugary drinks, it sounds fun for a long weekend. But for an eternity? The unrelenting rhythm of crashing waves and wailing seagulls, it's like a crescendoing song of evil that makes me question the very foundation of the universe. Why am I here? Why are any of us here? What kind of sentient being would do this? Please erase me from this existence. Make it so I was never born. Pull the plug in this experiment and let my soul be free. And please, please get me out of this polo shirt. Okay, let's get you to bed, buddy. I don't want to go to bed. Going to bed means eventually I'll have to wake up. Yikes, huh? That was a weird way to end. Ah, well, what are you going to do? You let the camera roll long enough. Somebody is bound to say something crazy. Anyways, seem like, um, seems like everyone had their shot to annoy me tonight, so hit the hay and get some rest. Tomorrow is going to be a doozy. Yeah, he was Dwight posting on main. Soft sunlight warms your skin, nudging you awake. Also, you're using a killer crab as a pillow, which is it's sort of okay with. What's that? You don't know about the killer crabs? Oh right, you didn't go on that Huntress date. You really missed out. It was thrilling. Or I guess it would have been. You'll have to play again the game again to get that reference, I suppose. You pull on your beach attire and splash water on your face. Dwight and Claudette approach. Is that look on their face as excitement? Terror? You notice your stomach flutters with butterflies. Someone's in love. Or you've been infected with zombie butterflies in your sleep. It has happened here before, but it's probably the love thing. It's time. Claudette gestures over the beach where the killers all stand flanked by tiki torches. It's a scene very reminiscent of a TV show you used to hate watch with your ex. You have to date someone to have an ex, okay? Suddenly, the message is clear. You are going to declare your affections for a killer in front of several other killers. Hey, isn't Trickster supposed- just farted. Isn't Trickster supposed to be here? We paid him good money to make some half ass cameos in the show. I'm gonna chew his agent out. But before they walk you over for your big moment, a little birdie told us that someone in particular has an extra strong crush on you. And another little birdie reminded us that you've been kind of a dick since you got here, and we reserve the right to withhold that information, even if it leads to you making a terrible decision that gets you murdered. So are you ready? Of course you're not, but too bad we're on schedule. You make your way to the row of hotties. Claudette and Dwight stand off to the side, hands behind their backs. It's been quite the 48 hours, but there are clearly sparks in the air. And I'm not just talking about this rusty chainsaw, though I do recommend staying away from those sparks. It's time for our newcomer to confess their love. Wait, I'd have to do a drum roll for this. No you don't, but who cares? Quite, who do you choose for your solo day? Can we at least do the flower thing? Dwight, I thought we agreed to, put, to keep that between us. No, not that flower thing. The thing where the shooter gets a flower as a symbol of the contestant's love and, a, and affection. Oh, right, right. I suppose. But no roses. They're such a cliche at this point. Well, that's good. I tried to pick a rose, but I got an ouchie, so I settled for these. What? You had to fucking put a bandage on them because they got ripped in half. You've done good quite. This is a lovely bouquet. Stay loyal. It's, it's funny you guys thought I wouldn't be by now. I hope- this sounds like JoJo music. I hope Dwight saves some of these for Claudette. They're a thing, right? You're getting that vibe too? Just me? Sorry, sorry. You've got other things to think about right now. Wait, who do you select to receive these flowers and spend the day with you today? It's- it, it's Wraith. Like, I'm not even gonna fucking hype it up. You turn to Wraith and let it aside? Wow. Are you becoming more like him? Wraith, since I got on the island, I have been drawn to your quiet nature. Your unassuming good looks. The nervous energy you bring to every situation, no matter how normal and mundane. Thanks for the sub, Pyro. I love the way your brain works, I love the way your body moves, and I love how we are together. Wraith looks like he just watched the Earth explode from an orbiting space shuttle. MW2 moment. His mouth hangs open a little, his eyebrows twitch. No one can tell if he's too excited to process or partially dead. Got anything to say, Wraith? Sounds about right. 
As you board the yacht, Wraith is surprisingly quiet, but the awkward vibes are down by about 60%. Good job, I guess. It was nice of Trapper to volunteer his yacht for the start of this day-long date, but a bit dismissive of him to say that you two were so boring that the yacht itself wouldn't even notice you were there. What would he know about fun anyways? He wears an old-timey one-piece bathing suit like the strong man from some bygone carnival. Come to think of it, that actually is a little fun. Wraith just had a regular old button-up shirt and shorts on. Wait, no, now's not the time to think about Trapper in the way. His vintage singlet hugs his curves just right. That's what he wants. Classic Trapper trap. You're here with Wraith, remember? Who you chose for some very good reasons you must have, I'm sure. You cast all of their thoughts out of your mind and stare at it and stand at the edge of the deck looking out at the ocean, wondering what that, what's out there, where you even are. The gentle rocking of the waves feels comforting as you turn to face your paramour. Wraith can barely look at you. Is it nerves or something else? I can't believe after spending so much time with me, you'd still want to do more. I'm only going to disappoint you. I can't stand anyone else here. Sh should I be like encouraging or like, you're simply the best option? This feels like Wattpad. Oh yeah, it's a dating sim. They're all built like this. I gotta, I gotta play it safe here. There's a way to end... Just farted. Okay. You could never disappoint me. You could never disappoint me. We'll see about that. We still have a full day ahead of us. Speaking of which, what exactly do you have planned for me today? Oh my god. That one wasn't a fart. I have fucking mucus in my throat, dude. All this talking is making my phlegm act up. Speaking of which, which exactly do you have planned for me today? Before we go that, into that, I need you to stop telling- I need you to tell something. It's about me, but ultimately, more about you. We spent a lot of time together. You know me pretty well. You know how I easily get flustered, how introverted and in my head I am. You know I'm awkward around other people, triggered by the sight or talk of money, weird about intimacy. But you are incredible and kind and patient. You put up with my quirk, and after spending too much time with you, I feel like I've changed. Someone- something about you puts me at ease. I feel different. I just got here. Why are you farting? Because I got gas, man, that I gotta expel from my body, and that's good. I had to change in order to spend this day with you the way I want, because I look, I look, almost there. He still can't say it. That's okay, though. You smile at him warmly. See, there it is. You always know how to comfort me. I haven't had that in a long time. Anyway, anyone I've been close to has abandoned me, usually against their will, but it still hurts, so why bother trying to connect with anyone? They're just going to be brutally murdered while I watch her over here or sleep through it. You put your hand on his shoulder. All I want is someone to love, a family to care for, not touched by evil or greed or power, a small house in the middle of nowhere, never bothered by anyone. You're the first person I've ever felt like I could see a future with. Wraith holds up Azarov's skull. My story about the man who pulled out his boss's skull and spine, that was about me. You almost tell him that you know, everyone knows, but you decide against it. Too long I have been attached to Azarov's skull. I have let it define me. No more. Wraith tosses the skull into the water. As he watches it sink, you notice a gold coin on the ground that dislodged from it. You know how Wraith is with golden coins. What do you do? He doesn't like mu he doesn't like money. Alright, sure. I mean, he's not even looking, but okay. Waste an opportunity to pick up a perfectly valuable object that might come in handy very soon. Wraith turns to you, smiling. He seems like a new man. Let's go back to the dump. What a romantic sentence to start the day with. Okay, uh, one second, guys. I need to re-up on water, so I'll be right back.
last time I checked, you were the... Who the fuck is Anthony? That's my guy. How do you not know who Anthony is? That's my guy. <clears throat> As you walk into the cosmic dump, Wraith oozes nervous excitement. Oh gosh, I have something incredible planned for tonight. He even tries to wink. It's kind of grotesque, but hey, this sad boy is finally opening up. He pulls out some lotions and oils, sensual. You ready? Hmm, that's odd. Uh, what's wrong? No, it's just, you're holding Azarov's skull again. You just made a whole big thing about how you feel like you've changed and you're not defined by it, and you threw it away? Yeah, I did. Azarov was terrible, and I'm no longer using his skull as my security blanket. This is his brother, Paul. Also a really bad guy I took care of. I have 20 of these things. All real bad guys. Oh well, guess you can't really change some people. Anyways, back to our exciting night to end all nights. I stay here and prepare, if you want to go find my bell. He takes a step closer and whispered. Then when you come back, we can ring it. Wait, what does that even mean? I don't know, but it seems very exciting. And look what you've done to this anxious, shy boy. He's losing his inhibitions. And maybe soon, he'll be losing his clothes. Thanks to the sub, Cosmonaut. To get there, you have to find the bell. It's gotta be on this island, right? Where do you start looking? I, I, I think, I think, I think she took it. I suppose I could check out the creepy black lighthouse on the edge of the island. Lighthouses usually only have one big room at the bottom. Should be easy enough to search. You turn to leave and catch Wraith winking at you again as you exit. You know what? Maybe that wasn't a wink at all. Some of the mud he uses to cover up his face is probably dripping while he sweats anxiously. You arrive at the black lighthouse, optimistic and full of purpose. You don't see a bell anywhere. Spirit? Hello? Nothing. She's nowhere to be found. Let's be honest, her heart was never really in this process, was it? You start poking around, wondering if Spirit took the bell and hid it around somewhere else. Oh, hey, hot stuff. You turn to see Trickster, casually posed, light reflecting off his skin, all of his many, many, too many abs glistening perfectly. Yeah, he's got like eight. Some of, one, at least one of those is obliques. Doing some snooping? I'm looking for Spirit. Me too, actually. We were gonna make face masks, and I told her I'd show her around my stage over on IP Island. It's tight. All the killers we couldn't clear to be in this game are hanging out over there. Just out of view and any interested party's lawyers. Having a blast, doing shots, making content. Oh my dude, you have got to meet my good friend. Nope, stop right there. Not getting sued over a dating sim. I feel that. Hey, have you seen Wraith's Bell anywhere? I'm not gonna lie to you, friend. I have no idea who you're talking about. But uh, you wanna maybe hop over to the other island and check out my stage? No. Absolutely not. I'm on a mission. Trickster shrugs. Guess we're all on our own journey. Until we meet again. As Trickster vanishes, you ponder your next move. And I'm left wondering, who just say no to checking out the sexy pop star's special hideaway? I don't know, non-groupies? Fuck you mean. I know how this business works, dude. I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fucking influencer. I know what they do. I know what they- I know what happens there. So we're to next. I feel like Trapper is the most likely to be, like, mean about this. Maybe Trapper's Cave? At least I know to look out for, well, traps. With that in mind, I'm sure I can get in, out, in and out safely and find that bell. To Trapper's Cave. Wow, this game sure is much bigger than you thought. Might need to replay it a couple times to really be able to grasp how much work was put into it. <laughs> uh. The fight, the, like, I, I, I fully respect the game devs just beating their own dick in their own game. That is, like, some of, like, my favorite shit I've ever seen. You enter Trapper's Caves tentatively. He is called Trapper. It stands to reason there may be some traps. Illuminated in a deep blue, the cave is home to a pool of water that shimmers and shines. You find yourself hoping Rice Bell isn't in here. You hear a voice behind from behind a pile of rocks, like a feeble old man calling for help. I'm looking around the cave. You ignore the voice and look around the cave because you have a job to do. Hey, maybe play this again to find out who the voice belongs to. Just saying, could be fun. Oh, what's this? You found a gold coin. You know what? Rather than hear somebody remind me that this is Trapper's Cave after all, I'm gonna just not touch anything. You step back from all things shiny and enticing and consider just leaving and figuring out this whole bell situation some other way. Well, 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 if it isn't quite. You decided against spending time with me and yet here you are, in my cave. You can't help but be drawn to me, can you? What is it? My animal magnetism? My musk? My hopeless devotion to leg day? Didn't you say nobody cared about calves? I don't think Wraith has ever set foot in leg day. No time to figure out what the hell that even means. You think fast. Uh, you're right, Trapper. It's the leg day thing. I love your leg days and, uh, also the musk. Love a good musk. I can't think of a single musk person named Musk I like. Knew it. Listen up, I know I made the wrong choice eliminating you and going with Wraith. How could I have been so stupid? 
You should probably cleave me in two, hack me into pieces. I deserve worse, but if you let me, I want to go back to Wraith and tell him I made a mistake and I'm leaving. For you. Trapper stares at you unnervingly, a twinkle in his eye. I should probably cleave you in two, right? You're right, but it takes a truly self-assured person to admit their mistakes. And you're clearly aware that you're stupid, so, you know, we're making progress. Whoa, are you pulling this off? I'll let you go on one condition. When you break the news that you're leaving him for me, tell him he has skinny chicken legs. Uh, yes, if you want, I can tell him that. Trapper lets out a hearty laugh. Oh yeah, I want. You scramble out of Trapper's cave as you hear his deep laughter echo behind you. Hope the bell wasn't here, because if it was, you're never going to get it. So where to next? I have a good feeling about Huntress's cabin. I love a cabin in the woods. Great things are always happening at those. People are walking into them and back out of them unscathed all the time. To Huntress's cabin. It's, it's as if this is your chance to visit and admire some of the locations you may not have been visited because of the choices you specifically made. What a great opportunity. <laughs> you enter Huntress's cabin and relax. It's disarmingly cozy with a warm, quirky vibe. You feel like you could live here if a kooky killer didn't already. You spot something shiny. Is that the bell? You reach out for it, but you're tackled from behind. It's Huntress. She holds an axe to your throat. I found you. Now I get to kill you. Say you're pranking Wraith. Um, I'm running a very complicated long con on Wraith. I'm trying this bell so he can do something. I don't know, but I'll probably use it to play a joke on him instead. Huntress's eyes sparkle. Hmm, this sounds like a fun game. Wanna play another one? Uh, sure. Great, I've got the perfect game in mind. Hide and seek. Bet you can't find me. Ready or not, here I come. Why, why wouldn't I simply just leave? Why wouldn't, like, while she hides, why wouldn't I take the bell and just, like, run? Not bad. Like, that seems like a perfectly viable alternative to what I'm doing right now. Teehee, you're silly. If this was real hide-and-seek, you'd be dead by now. But this doesn't change anything. What do you mean? I'm still mad you broke into my house, which is too bad, because I do know something about the bell. Maybe I'll tell you later. We'll see. Huntress goes into another room, and you realize you're not going to get anything else here. Except possibly kill. I've got bad news for you. You've already searched the spot that Spirits and Trapper hang out. You even checked out Trickster's stage. Would have been nice if an actual concert was going on, but eh, maybe in the sequel. And now you've also searched Huntress's cabin, too, and managed to not get yourself skinned. However, just having your skin, as remarkably sun-kissed as it is, isn't as good as having your skin and Wraith's bell. Look like you're just going to have to admit defeat but on this one and head back to Wraith empty, empty-handed. You tried hard. You really did. If you were a game, I'd give you a good review. That being said, Wraith is... Well, I don't want to say unkind, because he really has been nice this whole time, but there is the whole spine-ripping thing. You enter the cosmic dump prepared to deliver Wraith the bad news. I know he seems sweet and shy and like he's not a killer, but he totally is. Is there a chance he could kill you? But the place is empty. Phew! Wraith must be off somewhere, still preparing. Ugh, what are you gonna do? You still don't have the bell. I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out. Who are you talking to? Huntress pops up from behind one of the giant obelisks, smiling behind the mask. I followed you back here. It was fun, like a cat stalking prey. Okay, yeah, that sounds fun. After you left, I was thinking, I want to tell you about the bell. Oh my god, Huntress, thank you. But it's going to cost you. You empty your pockets and hand over all your gold coins. Ooh, sparkly. Okay, so Wraith's bell. I saw a spirit with it yesterday. She was walking back from here and says she was eavesdropping on your date. So when you weren't looking, she stole it to sabotage your buddy relationship with Wraith. I think she said something about a cringy truth or dare game. I think they had a fling or something and she's still mad about it. Or not, who knows. She's definitely mad about something. Even though it's rusty and old and still kind of shiny, so I offered to pay her for it. But she had the perfect spot for it picked out at the top of her lighthouse. Oh great, I need to go back to the lighthouse and deal with Spieler. Tell her I'll still buy it from her. Oh great, I need to go back to the lighthouse and deal with Spirit. You return to the lighthouse and head back upstairs. No more messing around. And this time, Spirit is waiting for you. Word on the street is you're looking for me? Or are you looking for me? Hey, am I gonna be all cheeky? Or am I gonna embarrass her for uh, allegedly being in cahoots with that guy? Bro's still playing? Yeah. I, I haven't beaten it yet, have I? Be cheeky? I'm feeling cheeky. Or are you looking for me? <laughs> um, yeah, no. I have literally no idea why I'd want to be around you, especially after you picked Wraith. Did you already get sick of the sad boy and wonder if the sad girl would do it for you? Cut the crap and give me the belt. I don't have time for this. Oh, oh my. Spirit seems aroused by your aggression. Oh fuck. Honestly, so am I. Just a little though. Let's not let things get weird between us. 
<laughs> oh, and they said the narrator wasn't romanceable. Motherfucker. So you want Rice Bell? How about we play a little game? I call it, don't look up to the light or you die. You can only open your eyes when I'm blocking the light. If you look directly at it, I'll die. Precisely. You're much smarter than you look. No offense. Stop on spirit and don't look straight into the light. If you look directly at it, your brain probably won't survive the stress. Well, you know what they say about drunk driving. Not bad. Perfect. Perfect. So the light isn't completely fatal, I guess. Only half of your brain and a portion of your soul were damaged. The rest seems to be mostly okay, as far as I can tell. Spirit hands over the bell. Thumbs up. Good job, me. Now please leave me alone. Gladly. And with that, you march triumphantly back to Wraith. You excitedly look, walk in to see Wraith in his sexiest outfit yet? It's gonna be the same thing, ain't it? Oh! Oh! Oh boy. Your eyes do that cartoon thing where they bug out of your skull. A wooga! In true Wraith fashion, his reaction is a little more subdued. He just looks at you and sort of smiles. Hope you have something for me that's gonna make me as happy as I just made you. Look at the guy, so open and comfortable in his own skin slash cloak slash painted burnt flesh thing. Beaming, you hold up the bell. It took me all over the island, but I found it. Spirit stole it because it's a long story. Now you want to tell me what we'll be doing with it? Wraith holds the bell and tears up. He kisses it. Weird. Only one more thing until we can finish this. What are we finishing? What are we finishing? Or should I say, ooh, you wink? Always a nice touch. You know, I can't tell you that yet. But while we wait, Wraith hands you a super sexy outfit. Outfit is a maybe too strong of a word. This is barely more than a tiny bit of cloth connected by various thin elastic belts. You look at it and bite your lip. Should I change? You'd better. <laughs> oh, my, oh my god. Here it goes. A wooga. Bark, bark, oop. Bark, bark noises. Bark, bark. You duck behind one of the obelisks and take off your clothes, slipping into your new share, barely there collection of straps. It is incredibly revealing. Somehow, you look more naked with this on than you would if you were actually naked. It's really something. Eyes up here. Sorry, sorry. It's just, it's impressive. Yeah, I mean, I know. I'm definitely a sight to behold, but, um... <laughs> you return to Wraith and model your new outfit. I'm wearing basically nothing. Oh, just you wait. The light's dim. Oh, dang. Is this what you've been waiting for, you little freak? Am I about to get, like, sacrificed for, uh, him to escape the island? Relaxed and confident, Wraith is a totally different person than the introverted loner you met when you arrived on the island. Are you ready? I want to give you my heart. He's literally going to hand it to me. I'm ready. The lights go out. It's so chilly. Don't worry, we'll warm up. He's not wrong. Wraith's naked skin feels like fire on your eyes. The, fa the fire he's been so afraid of this whole time? You melt into his arms, his lips exploring, uh... I should, I should probably leave you too alone. It was weird to be documenting this. <laughs> Uh, canonically be fucking in the laundry, you know what I'm saying? Before I gave you my heart, I'm going to give you something else. Mm, there it is. Yeah, I'm gonna head out. I'll see you in a hold up. Even in the dark, I think I know that smell. It's like salad dressing mixed with suntan oil. Dwight and Claudette, guess they like to watch. Hold that thought, lovebirds. Wraith, your special guest, is here a little early. Wow, I didn't know human bodies could fit that way together. Sure they can. I'll show you when we're done tonight. The lights pop back on. You and Wraith are still wearing virtually nothing. No time to get dressed. We've got to go immediately. I hate these fuckers so bad. So much. I feel no remorse for treating them like shit the entire fucking game. That's right. It's secret hatch reveal time. And no, that's not some double entendre. Follow us. Dwight and Claudette disappear into an open hatch on the ground. Wraith throws on the, some clothes and you both follow. Notice how I didn't put on clothes. It's even colder down here. Well, have fun. Our job pretty much stops at getting you here. Contrary to what you may have heard, we don't like to watch. Not this. See you later. They climb back later, the ladder as you turn around. Across from you stands a very old Nigerian woman. Grandma Abby. Philip! They embrace. You are suddenly aware of how exposed your skin is and how chilly you are. Forgive me, Quite. This is my grandmother. Abigail, pleased to meet you, Quite. Oh, you're the one my little Philip has chosen. Interesting. Interesting? What does that mean? Do you need to learn the, earn the respect of Grandma Abby now? I can't wait to get to know the person my Philip has decided to give his heart to. Come, help me make drinks. You go with Grandma Abby. I have to prepare the bell? Happy to, Philip. 
Wraith looks cheapest, like he's reverted a little back to his old self. Fuck, I was not ready to meet the parents, man. Especially not in, like, a thong. Oh yeah, I guess I never told you my real name. It's Philip. You bowed deeply. Nice to meet you. Wraith laughs, grabs the bell, and leaves Grandma Abby. Grandma Abby takes your hand and guides you to the table with potions. Come, let's get some refreshments. I'm an old lady, and it's not easy for me to mix these exactly. My hands just aren't as steady as they once were. You'll need to help me pour. Now, now doesn't seem like the time for questions like, what is this, or are we supposed to drink these possibly poisonous liquids? Just get to it! Fill that cup up. Perfect. 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 Not bad. Fuck. I really scuffed those last one. Hmm, that could have been better, but I certainly wouldn't be able to manage it. I suppose it will have to do. Come, while we wait, I want to make sure you're the one. You sit across from her and she smiles brightly at you. Philip has been through so much. He saw things as a child that no child should ever have to even think about. I fear what that could do to a person, but not Philip. He is thoughtful and strong-willed. He is a good boy. I agree. Although, thinking back to what you two were getting up to right before this, maybe you don't agree. Tell me quite. Philip's birthday is coming up. What would you get him as a gift? Gold. A nice candle. He wouldn't want gold. He doesn't like money. A statue of a horse? Too much. He, he'd want something- No, he doesn't like fire. He doesn't like fire. It's gotta be the horse. He doesn't like the horse. I don't know, something big and bold? Maybe a statue? Maybe of a horse? You have no idea why you said that and you immediately regret it? But Grandma Abby's face lights up. Wonderful! That would remind him of his- of the knight. His favorite chess piece. Oh! I remembered! I remembered! Oh, thank god. Yes, I know. You liar. Okay, tell me this. If Philip could be a tree, what kind of tree would he be? Neither of these are trees. I, did he give me something related to this? I remember the things he didn't like over the things that he liked. I'm pretty sure it was Rhododendron. Like, that's what I picked last time. Cactus, he didn't like the other one. He said he was happy with my answer. A rhododendron with colorful, beautiful blossoms. They make me exp just to make sure you can. He might make you feel that way, but that's not. Uh, run it, run it back, run it back, run it back. It's a good thing we have this funny fast forward button. That makes my life so much easier. Because we have a lot to go through to redo this correctly. You fool. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. We'll do this correctly. We'll do this correctly. You goofy goober minus the rock. That's so far back. Yeah, dude, it usually did it with each scene. Crying quite didn't listen to chat sagely advice. It, you realize it was like evenly split between both of them, right? Okay, bye. Who the fuck just put cactusy in chat? Okay, we gotta do the funny mini game. Not bad. What do you mean? That's perfect. God damn it. There we go. Okay, cool, 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 cool. We're, we, we're just be zooming through shit. Cactus was in majority. Listen. I, I have, I have a fucking, I have a scrolling chat. We have, we simply have a different perspective on this. Okay, let's go. Fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, perfectly. 
Easy clap. Yay, got the bell. Yay, got the bell. Yep, there it is. You love to see it. You love to see it. Thanks for the sub, Michael. Appreciate it. Okay, there we go. Sex scene in the dark. Sex scene in the dark. The entire chat is getting timed out. Yeah, it's because you guys keep saying Ussie. Okay. One. Two. Fuck. Three. Oh, God, God damn it. Okay, I, 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 I... Correct. And we're back here. Okay, and I'm saving. I'm saving right here. There we go. Very cool. A true survivor. Prickly on the outside, but warm on the inside. You can be alone and thrive in my climate, like Wraith. Grandma Abby's not content, and she calls out, Philip, worry. Give me a couple more minutes. She turns back to you. Well then, how about a game to lighten the mood before our big event? Maybe we can do some consolation trivia or play cornhole? Well, how convenient. You have, may have played one of these before. Never mind the fact they were in a completely di different location, and it makes no sense that you could do them here underground in a completely different area. We had plenty of money to make some other mini games, okay? This is Dead by Daylight. We just ha just have some goddamn fun for once in your life. Since one of these games may be familiar to you, who knows? You might get an extra relationship stat boost if you try the one you haven't before. But what do I know? I'm just an omniscient narrator. Cornhole was the one. I'm, I'm just gonna go for Cornhole. Cornhole coming right up. Toss that little skull. Perfect. Holy fuck, four for four. My fucking god, I'm cracked! I'm holy shit! Look at you, you're a regular cornhole hustler. A little flashy for my taste, but when you're good, you're good. No denying that. I'm glad you got a moment to relax. Sorry I yelled at you earlier. It's been a long game. Wraith re-enters, holding the bell. It looks brand new. I think we're ready. Time to drink up. Grandma Abby hands out the potions, or uh, drinks you made. First to Wraith, then herself. Then she stops and looks at you. She stares you down intensely with a sweet smile on her face. No matter what you do, you cannot abandon my Philip. Do you understand? He has been abandoned his whole life. I regret leaving that bunker. His parents regret leaving our village. But he is here now and he has opened up to you of all people. You cannot betray him, or I will haunt you from my grave. And my spectra form is not always as nice as the one before you right now. Oh, uh, thank you for the advice. Of course, dear. Now, where were you two before I arrived? Uh, we were about to play a board game. Fully clothed, of course. It's okay, she knows. She does? Of course I do. It's a requirement of the ritual. The what? Grandma Abby and Wraith stand up and walk to the wall with hanging chains and locks. Are you ready? Yes, I am finally ready to leave this place. As Grandma Abby places Wraith and chains, your jaw drops. What is happening? This is what we've been working towards. This is how we consummate our relationship. The cult of the Black Smail Veil would do this ritual to leave and return to the island. One lover would be sacrificed and the other would do the sacrificing? No, bro, no! So here I am, ready to be, move on to be sacrificed. No, no, this is crazy. I don't even know what to do. That's why Grandma Abby's ghost was summoned, to help. Philip's heart must be removed, lit on fire, and the bell rung. Everything you've done here has been building to this. That's so fucked. In shock, you look up at Wraith, arms and legs splayed across the, against the cold, mossy stone. You have to do the ritual. You have to carve out my heart. You don't get an invitation like that every day. It sounds like fun, doesn't it? You've done so well, you've earned it. We're almost at the finish line. You didn't think I brought you all this way without a plan, did you? What kind of sinister body of salt water do you think I am? I'm sorry I didn't tell you before, I couldn't. Also, his name changed to Phil. I couldn't, you never would have come with me on this journey. The disturbingly calm Grandma Abby hands you a jagged dagger. It seems far too dull for this job. Thanks for the sub, Lemon Skittles. All he wants to do is leave this place with you. You can make that happen. Those who stay together, who slay together, stay together. Grandma Abby, still windy under very intense and disturbing circumstance. The ritual requires sacrifice on both ends. We both need to be in love with each other. I love you and I've been waiting to give you my heart. Please, take it. 
man. That's my serial killer. I love you too. Stifling tears, you accept the dagger from Grandma Abby. After taking a moment to compose yourself, plunge it into Wraith's chest. He winces and groans as you slice him open. I'm sorry. As you dig the knife in, Wraith reaches out and brushes his thumb across your cheek. Even in this nightmarish situation, your heart races and your cheeks flush red. He smiles through the pain. Your hair was covering your face. I wanted to get a better look at you. That's not more accurate. I'm bald. Awkward. Not as awkward as what you're actually doing, though, which, to remind you, is plugging a dagger to the chest of your beloved right after declaring your love for each other in order to remove his heart for a strange ritual that might be complete bullshit. Real Romeo and Juliet vibes. Wraith goes limp as your hand into the gaping hole you made. It's slippery and warm and you're not a doctor. How are you supposed to? Oh no, there it is. You've slipped under his ribcage and that is definitely a heart. You try not to vomit as you wrap your fingers around it. Take a breath and pull. It slides out surprisingly easy. Grandma Abby snips some arteries and veins and takes the heart from you. Covered in blood and tears, you watch her put your beloved's heart in a stone dish and light it on fire. She takes the bell, looking fresh and shiny and new, and rings it. There is a blinding, flashing light. In that instant, you worry you've killed Wraith for nothing. And then, blackness. Through the darkness, you hear the sounds of the waves lapping. It's calm and still, just like when this journey began. Remember that? Feels like it was just an hour and 57 minutes ago. No, it's definitely longer than that. I just rewound a bit. You realized everything is dark because your eyes are closed. You decided to keep them that way for just one more moment. You did it. You fell in love with a killer. You made him fall in love with you, and you consummated your relationship. By agreeing to sacrifice him in a questionable ritual in order to get off this island. Did you do the right thing? Did you play the game correctly? God damn, that art is sick. You open your eyes. You're still here, but you feel a weight has been lifted. You look to your right. Wraith is here, alive. He has stitches on his chest. You lo your love is alive, but the ritual didn't work. What is going on in this place? Outside, Claudette and Grandma Abby buried Dwight in a hole, sculpting him into a, cast a sand castle in the shape of a T-Rex. We could join them and play in the sand, or we could get down and dirty right here in my cabana. Let's leave them out there until high tide, maybe longer. Wraith smiles. Roar, that's Dino for I love you. I should, I hope he, I wish he died. The end! Whee! We got the one down, the one down achievement. Hooked on you, a dead by daylight sim. Oh my god. I mean, at least we got to keep fucking. Yes, and Dwight died. No, he's just in a sand sculpture again is all. Wow. Yeah, everyone at PSYOP. This was a CIA de like developed and funded game. Oh my god. That was fun. That was fun. I did enjoy that. I did have a good time playing that. But holy fuck, that was a lot of reading. My throat hurts. You guys know I hate reading, especially out loud. And it feels like I have to do that a lot on stream, because I choose to only play fucking text-based games for the life of me. Bitches achieved. Very cool. Very cool. Hooked on you, a Dead by Daylight dating sim. Thanks for the thanks for the personal use copy, guys. Appreciate ya. Turns out the ritual was just Philip's fetish. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that 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 that, that was. I, I was hoping to have a little uh, extra time at the end of the street, but fuck, that was long. That being said, did you guys know if you're watching this on YouTube, you missed out? Because we stream these live on twitch.tv slash quite on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and you could have been here live for every up and down and every single one of my farts. Good God, you could have been here. Rip YouTube viewers. Anyways, guys, thank you for sticking around for the whole stream. I'm going to run a quick ad break, and then we're going to raid someone. Stick around for it. It's always fun to uh, just, like, throw like throw us up at, so at someone and just, like, say hi and all that fun shit. I uh, hope to see you all there. Oh, these racks give me a boner. I'm too hard. Bark, bark, come to Twitch. You totally should. It would be epic and a lot of fun, I think. Who's live?
at the moment. Um, you know, I've wanted to for a minute. I might raid. I'll probably raid Iron Mouse. It's been a, it's been a fat minute since we've raided a VTuber. Could be fun. Could be cool. And she's the only VTuber I know who's live right now, so. <laughs> Awkward. All right, I hope to see all of y'all on Wednesday's stream. And I hope to see all of y'all in this raid. That'd be really cool. If, if not all of you show up, this is going to be incredibly embarrassing for me. And I'll probably cry and shit myself. Um, and you wouldn't want to, like, embarrass me like that, right? You wouldn't want to, like, embarrass me and make me shit and cry, would you? It seems like you would. All right, I'll see you guys on Wednesday with Animal Jam. I'll see you soon. I really do. It looks like these are the only colored trees, so...